Yo, 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 we coming to you live on location. Me and D-Miles still here in Orlando, but today, man, we got something for you real special, man. This our 2000 draft classmate, man. He live on location. This All man the famer, is at the, uh, I don't know if he at the mall or at home. He looked like he was in the atrium out there in Seattle, <laughs> but it's something real lavish, man. We got Jay Crossover. The sixth man himself. Six God. You feel me? One of the best to ever do it, man. This our dog, our friend, and hey, everybody who know him know he'll still give you the business right now. He's still fielding and accepting and deciding what he's gonna do on a couple NBA calls. So he still got that work. But man, appreciate you pulling up on us, Maul, man. It's young Maul in the hey, field. Hey, hey, and now. All the intro was cool, but now I know I made it. I'm on the knuckleheads, but I'm straight now. I'm cool. Y'all cool. Y'all Hey, you a Hall of Famer, baby. We got to get you on, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got the future HOF right here. Hey, I'm just happy I'm live on location, bro. I've been watching everybody. Brought to you by Thigh Stop. But let me ask you this. Have we represented our time frame the right way and brought the ones that you did? That we always talk about and we always, we always respect and love for the game? Always. It's so real, though. That's why I wanted to be on it. Like, it's so real. Like, that's why I'm a fan of the show. Like, forget me being on it. I've been watching, like, every episode. Yeah. You know I, mean? I already like, know how I'm you are about this hoop thing. You are, you, are, you are purist. You take in everything and consume everything. everything that got something to do about hoop, especially when it's real. I already know. Y'all already got me thinking who's the first person to bust my ass. I don't. I got the whole format of the show. I've been watching this before. <laughs> well, well, since you said it, like, uh, who's the first person to bust your ass? Take off. I ain't never told this story. It was Latrell Spreewood. I remember my first preseason Ooh, game was in the Garden. Spree. And at the time, you guys know at the Garden, at the time, both teams were at opposite ends of the hallways, but you could see each other. Yeah. And I'll never forget, Spree came out when his, his group got together. And he said, okay, I'm reloaded. The Jay-Z uh, from the, the intro. And I'm like, oh, man, that's free well right there. You know what I mean? So I was already done from that moment on. So when I got in the game, Garden was over with. <laughs> so you just do it straight hard right. Yeah, it was over. It hard was over. right. So wait, so wait, was this like, like you say, when, tell me when you was in that moment, was this, I know you, I know how you are with the history of this thing. I know how we both feel about MJ. Was this like John Starks and MJ in the hallway looking like we seen in, the, in, in Come Fly With Me and all the movies yeah. you saw about MJ? I, it was just like it, cause cute. The first thing I'm thinking is we professionals, you know what I mean? You with your group, they with their group. But he screamed it loud enough so everybody could hear. He you knew. Know, at the time, they was just, we, we was all 2000 draft class. So 99, they just come out the finals. Yeah. Right. So the first thing he says, is, okay, I'm reloaded. I'm like, shit. <laughs> and it's preseason. And it's preseason. Right. <laughs> so it, it, when I got, when I was guarding him in the game, it was like, I, was, I didn't have a chance. And you know, he, he sized you up and then he gone. That first step, he's out. And I think right. he went by me and dunked or something. I feel like I was on an island, like all the way by myself. Ari don't, Ari don't play defense like that. I really <laughs> felt like I was on the island. <laughs> I, I, I was in Cleveland. Uh, uh, I was running point. Uh, uh, mm. Paul Siles put me at point. This is, this LeBron, is story. LeBron was on my team. It was me, LeBron, Ricky Davis, Booz, and Z. And I'm running point. So, you know, as a point guard, I'm doing the, the turn, dribble to the left, spin, dribble to the left, trying yeah, to set nah. up the offense. So I'm yeah. casually <laughs> doing it, and Spreewell ripped me. And after he ripped me, man, he put that bitch on his name. All the way touching <laughs> Dunked that bitch. I'm talking about like old school Golden State. Just yeah, yeah. His name. I was so pissed. Yeah, these guys got mad. Y'all got me playing so the point. Pissed. I was supposed to be out of playing the point. I was supposed to catch and go around. <laughs> I was so pissed. Yeah, they pointed finger somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I was so pissed. But I want to say this, man. The first time I seen you, boy. The first time I seen you was in St. Louis at the Coca Cola shootout. Yeah. Yeah. I I uh, I got tickets to the game and I sit on the floor and you know they had all these people and uh, I forgot who y'all playing but y'all playing like number one team or something I, I think y'all might play Oak Hill or something y'all playing somebody big and when, when I seen you play I think you had like forty five or forty eight or something like that but the way you played and you always played like that ever since I seen you from day one Straight up. I just yeah. wanted to know. It's already hard when you're playing organized ball and you come off the street doing whatever you want to do. But mm -hmm. your game was always built on a street game plus the organized ball. Like you never shied away from not throwing it off the backboard, not going behind your back, not doing this. Where some people in our era consider that as flashy or yeah, or, or you are you doing too much or something like that. But 
one thing I love about you and your game, man, is just, man, you never shied away from that. You always been you and you stayed that way from the day I seen you. Like, yeah, so how about you? Yeah. I want you to talk about that, that Coke Coke shootout though. And uh, I remember that game in St. Louis and that was one of the amazing games where I just followed you since then. So, so D, that was like our first tournament as a team where we got a chance to lead the state yeah. as a high school team. Not on the AAU stuff, but like, oh. you know, you become one of those teams where yeah. like, you know, people talking about you around the country. Now you get them big invites. Right. And so for me, I was like, I'm gonna put on a show. You know what I mean? Like, I, like you said, I never changed my style of play, but I also know the big moments. You got to give a little something extra. You know what I mean? And so for me, I was like, I'm going to put on a show. Unfortunately, we lost that game. Yeah. But I didn't know there was a young D Miles in the crowd. Yeah. You know, but you knew there was a big crowd there. You knew it was a Coca Cola mm -hmm. tournament and they put it on and everything. And I just wanted to just, just let people around the country know my name because I wasn't really known like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Like out here in Seattle on the West Coast and Northwest, they knew me, but past that, didn't nobody really know me. Right. So for me, for my school, a young Nate Robinson's on that team, right? I'm trying to just put on for the city at the time. And and I never changed my game, bro. And you know how we came up. Like, it's different when I say we because us three were in the exact same they draft. Exactly. Like, yeah. So it's a whole <laughs> different thing. It wasn't like you was three years ahead of me and Q was two years right. behind me. Like, we was He's all, all together. Yeah. And together, you know what's right? crazy? I think you the first person from our draft class that we didn't had on here. Like, I, that's crazy. Yeah. That's an honor, bro. Because yeah. y'all like, straight up, I think you the first you person the first from person our draft, draft class. class. Like, like you know what I'm saying? That we really didn't had on here. I'm sitting here that's thinking crazy. about you say that. That's crazy. I remember that's the crazy. draft. I remember the draft though. Because <laughs> no, hold up, B. I remember the <laughs> draft when y'all two Word. walked to Chicago camp. Y'all were celebs, bro. Like. All the way, I'm in the like I'm going to camp just trying to make my name. Y'all walking in like I'm like it's Q and D Miles. Like they all had the big boy chains, everything. I'm like man, like they y'all to me to be honest, y'all two, Kenya and Demar were like the wave of our draft. Like y'all four like pushed our class because everybody y'all put a light on this. I'll never forget D when you was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, you and Ticket, yeah, me man. and the suit. You know what I mean? Like y'all yeah. too with Jordan, like y'all was the wave. Like y'all don't understand how like how dope y'all are and how like th this that's <laughs> you can go in China and do this and they already know what it is. You know what I mean? Like that's that's iconic. And yeah. so I want to give y'all y'all roses and flowers too, bro. Like y'all, I know y'all interviewing and doing your thing, but man, like y'all was the wave. Y'all, even though we all the same age, we looked up to y'all. Y'all pushed it. So yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. appreciate Amen. that, bro. I, like I said, For I remember sure. the draft, man, and we was all at the draft, and I remember, man, you you got the jewelry. Remember when you got yeah. the jewelry? You just bought the, that boy came back so I spicy. Spicy. I I I so I earrings bigger than all everything. Damn, I I see Jamal, he got that check, and me and Q was we was foaming at the mouth. We was like, damn, my agent told us don't buy no jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my agent said, go ahead, do your thing. Hey, you know, and you know us. We coming from like some real street shit. So like even our style of play was really from the neighborhood. Like yeah. it's some hood stuff that came. And at the time, it was M1. It was all that. You man, know, I need earrings like Allen Iverson, man. I need <laughs> earrings like, like Allen like Iverson. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to continue his legacy. Like I, yeah. I literally, I tweeted this last night, bro. I had 35 pictures of Allen Iverson on my wall. That so Q, great. when you told that story about going to Zoe Summer Groove and, and D-Miles all messed up and you was hanging with AI, like that was bro. our hero. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That was our hero. Yeah. Bro, when I say that was one of the like dopest nights ever, like that's what I'm saying. Like you that was the literally after we got drafted and we did our thing in Minnesota and you know had you know had that little Khalid Alameen had that party. We did that, then everybody went to their respective cities, did interviews, whatever. Then you went back to your, you know, hometown, whatever. Like, bro, when I say the draft, I mean Zoe Summer Group was like probably like 10 days, 10, 12 days after the draft, and we went down there the week before and we with Zoe. Like, bro, yep. with Zoe. Like, we stayed at his crib for like five days, bro. Like, this man got the Sprite machine with him on the cover. We just hitting it, getting free. That's like, skin, man, I everything, can't believe, huh? I can't believe we just getting free pop. We don't even want to drink. We just boom, boom. Then listen to <laughs> this, a fall. Like, it come out, right? Bro, and then it was like, we get to that. And it was legit, like, that was like an all star game. Name somebody right. Stefan Marbury, uh, Twan yeah. Walker, uh, Vince Irish. coming off the dunk contest, AI, uh, T Mac. Yeah. Patrick Ewing, Gary Payton, Zoe. It was like, it was a who's who's. It was a legit Larry Hughes. It was a legit all second. Then the first night, 
you know, Larry was my OG, my big bro. Like, he pulled us right. out, like, we about to go out. We going out. And then AI come down. So I'm like, oh, my God. This is me and Rio. You know Rio, G. I got on. I had, I'm fresh out. I still have my diamond cut chain. I ain't even really got my jewelry game yet. Had a diamond cut three from in college. That was my number. We sit in the limo. AI come in. He sit there. He say, what's up? Peace up. All this. We sat there. We wait for a couple more people to come. He looking at my chain. He said, oh, that's a nice chain. I can't remember his homeboy name. He said, man, go get my three. I'm like, oh, he about to kill. I'm about to, have to tuck my thing in, right? So he come right. down with the chain, bro. AI give me his chain, put it on my neck. Take mine off and say, nah, this the real three. Man, I'm out of here for the whole night, right, bro. bro. I'm about to party with him with the real number three. It, it was over. It bro, was over, bro. Because he was, he was like the leader of our generation. Facts. He made it okay to be yourself. He made Facts. it okay to get taxed. He made it okay to wear jerseys, to wear jewelry and just be yourself. Like yeah. he ain't trying to be nothing you're not, but he made it okay to do that. He gave us confidence. He, so he was like the leader. Yeah. You know what I mean? He took, yeah. he, and took, so, he took all the bullets for everything you see now. Yeah. 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 And he, and he allowed us to continue to, to, to do what we want to do and have confidence and know it would be all right. So he was the one. And then like y'all, y'all too, especially bro, I'm telling y'all, y'all was like the Zions and the mellows of, of your day. I wasn't even in that class. I'm looking at y'all like, man, they the way, bro. Like they, Y'all was going to high school game. Look what y'all was doing. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Putting the city on. Like, man, y'all, y'all should be celebrated, bro. Like for real. Like I I, I lived it in real time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I remember all those stories. I remember all that. Oh yeah, nah. We appreciate the love now. Nah. You you was part of the culture that brought the headband back too, though. We was all yeah. right there together. Yeah, we was JT, all right. JT, Jay Terry was a big part of it. You yep. everybody yep. wasn't doing it big like that. I know you're a big historian. I know you choose in Michigan to be a college, and you know we everybody yeah. loved them Fab Five. Yeah, so I just want to know how you felt when you seen that gold and blue, and you see your name on that jersey, and you finna get ready to play for bro. Michigan and add to that legacy of the Fab Five. How was that, bro? When I was in eighth grade, Michigan already had me. They didn't even know it. I wasn't a kid, <laughs> no. But they had me already because the Fab yeah. Five. I'm seeing the ball head to. The baggy shorts, the Barclays, the the black socks, and just a swagger. I'm like, yeah. man, we will never see five high school seniors the next year go to the national championship and then do it again in sophomores. Like yeah. that's not happening. Yeah. And so when I went and I got recruited by Michigan, I committed early. It wasn't no thought. It wasn't nothing. I went on one visit. <laughs> they said you getting Jay. They said you can get Jalen Rose Locker. I was like, oh, that's it. It's done. I committed on the spot. Yeah. That way everybody was hot because I didn't even take no other visits. Yeah. That. But they already had me. So when I put the Michigan jersey on, I'm like, man, even 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 shit like when I'm running on the track and we get disciplined, I'm like, man, Jalen ran these tracks. See where was running that? Okay, okay. Well, I mean, that's just what it is. The Fab Five. Okay, and you put on the show, throwing it off the backboard and all sorts Bro. of stuff in there. Like, Bro, like, like I say, like everywhere you went, you brought that style and you never changed up or switched up no matter what it is. And you had a lot of coaches in your day. Yeah. And a lot of yeah, coaches so, will try to change you, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so that was one of my big homies was from Detroit. And so we had a plan. He was like, look, the first game of the season, they don't really know you out here. So you got to like put it down. So just the, the people around campus know you, you know, the, the students and everything. So I, boom, hit, I think I had hit the game with a shot first game. He's like, okay, now you're getting that buzz. Now I, it was the big 10 ACC challenge. So we're going to play Georgia Tech. He said, this is where the cable world kind of find out about you boom freshman in the game 14 five points i mean five assists five steals five blocks we win the game he said the next game we played duke he said now this where the, the whole like this is where everybody find out about you it's national game you know one of them saturday morning games mm -hmm. and i put on a show i put on 27 and 6 and coach k came to me after the game he was like man we had nobody to guard you he's like you got so many moves and coach k was doing his little head like got so many moves and so i had a plan that kind of went exactly how I wanted to do. I didn't know I was going to come out that year because that year the Big Ten was tough and I got in trouble. Bro, I said I got say, in trouble. And I so I, say, yeah, wait a so I had to miss half the year. Right. How many games you played total? That couldn't bro, have been I part of the I played 17 plan. games. That's what I remember. I remember you played yeah. 17 nah, getting games. Busy, bro. But I was getting busy. I let my team points, assists, steals. Yeah, you on Sports Center every time y'all play. Right. And it was always something freaky, though. Yeah, and it got crazy, bro. Because they said the year before, you could do your homework at a, at a game. Like, it wasn't popping at all. So when we mm -hmm. came, we had a freshman group, Lavelle Blanchard. You remember all these names, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. We, we, he pushed our class to one of the top class in the country because he was Gatorade Player of the Year. And so with that, um, man, we got rolling. We started out like 
12 and five, right? But it, a lot of big games we played well in. And then I had my own student section. I ain't never seen that before. Like, you know, they had a student section in colleges. But mm-hmm. D-Miles, you don't know, you don't know. D-Miles but Q, you know, know they had this student section. I mean, they had the tier <laughs> yeah, section man. in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I had my own student section besides that. You know what I mean? So it just took off in the headband. They all wear headbands. And I'm like, man, this is, I'm at Michigan where I dreamed about going. They gave my own section, right? So I'm like, dang, like, and I was at school with Tom Brady and all of them. But at the time, like, we were just popular and we was right. doing well. And then from there, like you said, D, that's the thing I'm most proud about my career. I've had 20 coaches, 20. They all see you differently. Y'all know, oh, you're a point guard, you're a shooting guard, you're a starter, you're off the right. bench, whatever. And I never lost myself. I never changed my game. I stayed true to myself the sure. whole time. Mm-hmm. And with that, I think kids now have, have said, you know what? Number one, I ain't got to start. I can be impactful off the bench. It's all good. And number two, I can stay true to myself. And that will, I think the way I did it will outlive me. It'll, it'll last longer because I did it that way instead of fitting in a safe box. Okay, I do this. Now I'm going to beat me. Yeah. I'm going to acquire taste. Either you like it or you don't, which is cool. But you got to understand this stuff. about that, though. Like, you and a, you, you, you kind of an anomaly, though. Like, it's not a lot of people that could come in the game. Like, forget about what when you walked in the league. I'm like, from day one, since you've been hooping, you've been bop, 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 and one mixtape, yeah. I'll break you down, bop you up. It's not a lot of dudes that could walk in from day one and then play as long as you did. And at the end, still be the dude. Like, look at Vince Carter. He came in as the high flyer, right? Like, he, yeah, he walks yeah. out, he Hall of Fame, he everything, and it's all respect right. to him. But he's not, he, he didn't have nowhere near the same game that he had from day one. You walked out the door with the same game you walked in, like, like for real. No, I it's think, not a lot of people that can say that. Like, I'm talking about as great as, as Kobe was. Kobe can't say that he walked out the door. I mean, obviously, he went out in a fashion that nobody ever could even think of. But, like, right. as far as, like, his game, he had developed the post game because he still wasn't. You walked out the same exact way. I'm about to ha, 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 ha. I'm about to yep. step back. I'm about to rap it. I'm about to, I got a move created out of me on a break when you behind the back. And then I like, like you walked out the door with the same game. Like, I don't even know if it's That's a good point. period that could say that. Like, period. Um, I didn't think about it like that. You're absolutely right, Q. So like, when you say you stuck to like who you were, like, like, it's not a lot of people that could say, yeah, I did that through because they had to change. Not even because yeah. they didn't want to, like, like, like me. I couldn't do nowhere near what I was all doing the wind, year all the one. windmill dunk she was doing back with windmills catching yeah, lives windmills. I came but, uh, like year one through four was totally different year 10 through 13 like you know what I'm saying I couldn't right. do the same if you asked me to if I was given the opportunity to I couldn't do the same stuff like you could that's different yeah that's God bro like I, I honestly thank God that he gave me the body type in the game because if you think about it and you guys know specifically when we first came in the league in 2000 the worst shot you could take was off the dribble three. They're like, man, you can get that shot with five seconds left. I saw you like tweet at the time, that. <laughs> you were supposed to get the ball to your dominant wing scorer, Paul Pierce, Kobe, Iris, and T-Mac, or throw it in the Shaq, Tim Duncan, KG, right? It was like, that's how the game was. Right. So the worst shot you could take was off the dribble three. For me, I think why part of the reason I stayed the same was because my game was already kind of ahead of its time as far as that. Yeah. Like being able to skill, like, okay, boom, 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 get to your shot. Boom, 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 off the dribble three. Like, so the skills always translated. And it's funny now because you see people, the way they're playing, right? You see a guy take 18 threes in a game. That's crazy. And it's not even the star player, but that's where the game is at, right? So, Q, think about when you was three-point champion and stuff you was doing. Bro, you would have broke all kind of records if you were playing at that. You know what I mean? Because it's it's okay to do it. At that point, it was consequences. Yeah, they You didn't. better make that three with, <laughs> yeah. with, with 20 on the clock or you coming out the game. Yeah. And so with that, I said all that to say this. I think my skills were kind of ahead because mm-hmm. when they finally started allowing people to do that, well, like, man, I've been doing this my whole life. I ain't yeah. got to adjust. Exactly. Bro, the 51-point the game I scored, it was off the bench. Oh, yeah. I and, remember. And it was – and it was – it wasn't nothing special. It was just how I played. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And But that's where the game is today. So I think part of it's me. I think part of, I know a lot of it's God. And I think the other part is just where the game and how it's evolved. You was the first to do the, the bounce behind the back, pick the dribble up and go. I just seen D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The day. How does it feel to see like the next generation, they watching you and, 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 Emulating your moves, how you was emulating people moves before, when you was coming yeah. up. Like how it's not that? even real, D. It's not even real to be honest with you. Cause 
that move, bro, I made up when I was 16. I made mm. up in a Doug Christie All-Star game. The, the pro-am that's mine now used to be here. Yeah. And so I plan I make the All-Star game. I'm playing against this guy who had locked me up a couple weeks before, mm. got physical with me. Like, I grown man playing overseas. Brian Parker's name. Shout out Brian Parker. Straight up. And he locked me up. And I, and I make the All-Star game. We're on opposite ends. And I'm coming down. It's just me and him. But I'm coming full speed. And I do the move. And I actually did a little more to it because there's it, a remix to it, but I was like, saving it if I ever made an All-Star game. I didn't make it. So now it's just, it's in my head, bro. <laughs> it's like, it's head. Just stuck there. I'm going to pass it to my son. Yeah. So I do the move and I go over here and he goes way over there. The crowd goes crazy. So I go back and ask my mom, I'm like, mom, what I do? Because she was there. She's like, I don't know. Then I, I kind of broke it down. My, I'm like, oh, I could do that anytime. But it's, it's crazy to see players now like, do things like that or because you don't know at the time that that move is going to outlive you yeah like it's, mm-hmm. i was the only person on the video game that could do the move like yeah. they allowed to do the move like that stuff's crazy bro like you don't even think about that so i, I, I never seen us, it before until you did it. yeah yeah i've never no, seen I, it, it before was, yeah that was god bro he said i'm gonna give you a gift with this one but Straight up. It, i think all of us like we all impacted culture yeah. And that's why 20 years later, you still got people doing this. That's yeah. why they're doing double behind the backs. That's why, yes. you know what I mean? So we tapped into the culture. And I think real recognize that. Real always recognize real. So I, I pay homage to all the young ones coming up. And I'm thankful for it. Who was that person? Who was them people that you was looking at and was like, man, I want to be like that. Bro. I want to dribble like that. Oh, I want to shoot like that. Or I want to dunk yeah, like I that. Know. I know who what you're about to say. Hold on, Q. Let me, who, 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 am I, who am I gonna say? The number you wear, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, they, he's right. It was, go ahead. I stole, so, bro, my favorite players ever is Magic, Michael, Isaiah, Kobe, Iverson, GP, T-Mac, Grant Hill, um, Penny, them dogs. And, and Ticket. So them dogs. I, I stole from all of them, and Nick Van Axel, because I used to sneak in Laker games. So I saw how he was handling the ball. Even Timmy, shout out Chicago, Tim Hardaway, like when he was doing the UTEP, so I stole from all these dudes, mm-hmm. all of them, every single one I stole from. Even Mark Price, I was stealing from how to split screens. Like yeah. I was, bro, I was going to sleep with my basketball. Like, so I yeah. studied this. You know, like I studied the, the game I, like I no know. other, bro. So yeah. I stole from everybody and then I just made up my own game. Right. Yeah. And so watching Iverson left to right, that's how I started making up behind the back. Cause you know, at the time he was left to right and everybody. Yeah, left but to then right. People start catching on that he was left to right and people, not you know, not in the league, but on the street level. Like, oh yeah, left to right is coming. You trying to do the Irish. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, how am I going to do something different? Okay, let me start going behind my back. And I'm like, for me, that's even better because I got long arms and the ball's behind me. So they can't get it, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let me start. Okay, let me, okay, double behind the back then. Okay, double behind the back to a cross. Okay, double behind the back to a cross to another cross. Yeah. Or double behind the back to a cross, cross has it. So I just start playing the game and I start figuring it out. I'm like, okay, so these are going to be your set moves. And you, if you was a boxer, you'd be Floyd Mayweather because you just, I'll do something just to get somebody to react. And now I'm just countering off what they do. They got to give up something. You know what I mean? Like they have to give up something. So I'm just reading your body. I may do something, see how you play, and then not do it again to the fourth quarter just to see how you're reacting to it. You understand that the way that you think and what you're explaining right now is not normal in more ways than one, right? That's the like first, I don't just, know first, that. Just, first, just to be able to think like that, the way you processing yeah. it is crazy. Serial killer type crazy. Then the fact <laughs> yeah. that you able to execute what you're saying and to do that many moves and then to be able to say, I know he got to give up something. I'm just about yeah. to wait. I'm going to keep doing this or that until, <laughs> until I he give up something. Yeah. Until he give up something. Give up that's, it's crazy you say it like that because it's so natural. Like my whole pattern of thinking is like that. So yeah. it's so natural for me. I don't even oh, look at I've it. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen like, it. You you already, this it, is it, the guy like Black. It already hit it your brain. Like when we play yeah. together in New York, like he would be the guy. He's coming to me a time or two in the in the layup line, right? We chilling, everything cool. You this the layup line, bro. And Ma would be like, Q. I ain't, I ain't like he, man had a routine that he did with his rubber bands. And he picked the bag, <laughs> he picked a rubber band from Anthony Yogonaga. Shout out Ant. He yeah, shout Ant out got the he little go. bag of rubber bands. He go to I watch him. He got a whole deal that he do. If yeah. my man miss a step or don't do something, it's over. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Like, you hear me? I'm talking about it's he- almost OC. Q, you know what's crazy? Man. My wife like, say I'm the same. The, my wife say I'm the same way right now. This to this day, it's the same. Bro, I didn't watch this man, and I didn't watch them like 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 primes up, bro. 
the game, the one of the best games I've ever seen, been a part of anything. When this man lost his entire mind in Madison Square Garden <laughs> against the against the Heat, bro. And it, and I done seen him do it a million times, like in the game, right? Like you know how it is, bro. You get the cooking and this thing and third. Like I might start talking or whatever. <laughs> he for real is crazy. Maul get the cooking and when he like, you know when he feel it, cause he ain't gonna say or do nothing. He gon' he gonna side eye you, gonna shoot you a quick look. <laughs> he gonna That's shoot dumb. you a look. That's and dumb. I said, I said, oh, I said, uh-oh. Oh shit. I say, hey, I, I remember being on the bench when it started. And he had to hit two, three in a row. I say, if he hit another, Malik Rose on, but I said, if he hit another one. He's starting to do that shit now. I say, it's about to happen. Say, that man hit one and he came to I was yelling at that man, shot me. I said, uh oh. I said, uh oh, it's happening. Cute. That I'm man cute. made the most un, un, like, consecutive made shots, like, contested. Man, they had. Cute. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you why, now looking back, I'm going to tell you why you knew I was hot. There was one play. So that game, bro, I missed my first four shots. I don't even know if you remember this. I do. Then I score, I score 42 straight points without a miss. <laughs> so it's it's 16 <laughs> straight times down the court, and I haven't missed a shot. Bro, they start on a jumbo trying, they start counting it, they start putting it up to like 10, 11, like every time he made one. They so count it down. The first quarter to the end of the third quarter, I didn't miss a shot. Damn. One of the plays Q was talking about, bro. Q gets an offensive rebound, I think. Somebody throws it to Q. Q is wide open. He looked over and said, here. He threw it like a bomb, like, like here. A, like a scoop <laughs> but He Like he knew, you know what I mean? And and that was the, I've had 50 other times, but that was the hottest night of my life. Like I had 52 and I came out the game with seven minutes to go. Mm-hmm. On the hottest night, dude, that could have been 65, for real. And, and it was easy. all the flow, bro. And like they the was- killing part, they put, they sent everybody. They switched yeah. everybody. I can't remember everybody on that team, but they sent, I'm talking about D Wade, D Wright, uh, and Twan. Twan, like, man, listen. Posey. Everybody, everybody got everybody part of that. Did. It was like GP was on that team, Pose, like. And they, they, just, they just won a championship. They won a championship. They, one, yeah, they just won a championship. Bro, I was sitting but that there. But that stuff don't happen, bro. That stuff do not happen without your teammates, without your coach, I'm telling you. Like you, you, you making the shots and you gonna get a lot of the acclaim, but bro, they giving you the ball, they set screens. Cause nah, they don't, everybody they don't was get supporting that kind of me riding with it, it for real. Everybody's a part of that, everybody. Yeah, always, always. always. Yeah. I want to ask you uh, this, just to get back, get back to the, like the early days, cause you had it early. Like who told you to play your game? For you to play the way you play. Like I say, coaches will take something from you. Some yeah. guys is scared to go behind their back. Some right. guys damn near be so scared of the coach, they scared to dribble between their legs. Right. Like you always play from the time I first seen you at an early age, you always play so freely. Yeah. And, and so, you always play like you, you was part of the culture, whether it was on the streets, like yours can translate off air right. on the court. Who who installed that in you? Who put that, who instilled that in you? I'm sorry. <laughs> I would say, I would say my dad from the standpoint that. You know, when you first see a person like that, you're like, oh, he's trying to be fancy. He's trying yeah. to be fancy. But my dad, once he kind of like, like, no, nah, that's who you are. You know what I mean? And I didn't play, like, I didn't come up, I didn't come up, like, train like a a, a natural basketball player, play AAU every year, play all yeah. these different teams. I was in the playground. And you could yeah. see that when I played. Like, I was yeah. truly on the playground. I was in the backyard by myself. So mm-hmm. for me, when I got to my high school team, because I didn't play until my junior year, and when I got to my high school team, my coach, he's a stickler. He probably yells more than any coach I ever had. He said, I'll let you do whatever you want on offense as long as you compete on defense. And mm-hmm. so when he said that, I was coming like, okay, I can I can do anything. He's like, anything. Man, one time I walked, I got the ball in the open court, full court. I walked up backwards. Mm-hmm. Defense is there. I walked up backwards the whole way, like you talked about. I finally faced him at the three-point line. I touched the ground, mm-hmm. threw it over my neck. <laughs> shoot the ball, and then take off running before it went in. And it went in, and he didn't say nothing. I'm like, oh, I could really do anything. And so <laughs> with that, he kind of cemented it, right? And so from that point on, especially like college and when I was free agent and all that, I was I wanted to pick teams that would be like, okay, we're going to embrace him for what he brings to the table. Because sometimes it's more than those two points. Sometimes it could be getting his team into it. It could be getting the fans into it. And that's worth more than that two points. Just like, you know, how some dudes don't want to take a half-court shot to mess up the percentage. Yeah. If they make that shot, it's only three points. But if they make it, it's really worth more. 
Now the yeah. fans that were sitting down is all up cheering. It's, it's like energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you bottle that up. And so for me, um, when I realized that, I'm like, man, I, bro, if I play right now outside two on two with no cameras, I'm going to play the exact same way. Like, it's, I'm not trying to be fancy. It's just who I am. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I play. Either you, you rock with it or you don't. If you don't, I understand it's not for you. Yeah. But I'm not changing who I am because you don't like it. Like, yeah, I'm going to embrace right. who I am and, and, and put that best foot forward. Yeah, them young guys need to hear that, man, because sometimes, man, you get you you get caught up so mentally. The Mark yeah. folks, you know what I'm saying, kids like that. These guys, these other guys will get you so caught up mentally in your own head where it's, it's fuck up your game. I remember watching yeah. Martell folks in college. He was a dog. That's my dog. That's my yeah, young I, I love Martell yeah. folks' game. He like I knew yeah, he posed to go number one because he was yep. killing. Killing. But then he get here in this league and this all these voices in your head, it fucks you up. Like play and your game like, and be you, because that, that's why they came to get you in the first place. And the one thing I learned, y'all, is and y'all know this, I learned like, man, they're gonna say whatever they want to say anyway. anyway. You can do everything mm -hmm. right there and they're gonna say yeah. something. So I said, man, fuck it. I wanted my whole life to be in the NBA. I'm gonna yeah. try all my shit. I'm gonna do everything that I want to do. So when I leave, they gonna say we liked them, we hated them, yeah. we loved them. It's yeah. one of the three. That's all you yeah. can really say. So I'm mm -hmm. like, man, but either way, I did it my way. And so yeah, I'm more I love, I love, about that than anything else. I love what, like you said, what you said about folks. That's how when he got down here, now he liked that. Yeah, yeah. Ain't oh, that. Now he he back. He bought I me. Mean, I know he got hurt this year and all that, but like, trust me. He good. Yeah. Don't mean nothing. So I'm I like like I'm like he, he yeah, he like we like six and oh before he got hurt. Then they went yeah, down. Yeah, he was, like he had it wrong. Yeah. yeah, I I seen him. I told him, hey, I love your game, bro. <laughs> like yeah. keep on doing you. So Ma, you know, you know, we as a as also as a as a former state champion in high school, yeah. how, how is it for you? Whitney you Young, right? Dude? Whitney Young. You know, we started that body shit that's going on. You feel me? What yeah. you see, you seeing all these killers come up out of there after that. Prior to me and my partners going there, we was known as the nerd school. I'm gonna go oh, okay, ahead and say okay. they called Winnie Young. We won an academic decathlon like a million times. still known as the time. nerd school. There's <laughs> another nerds coming up out of there. Nah, Jaleel Okafor and some other people say different. But like I was saying, as a former champion and a state champion, you know, we got pros up out of there now. I know I was the first, but I'm far from the left. We got somebody, DJ Stewart, coming out this year. Duke coming out oh, yeah, Duke heard, this yeah. year yep. in the draft. But, Ma, how was it for you to put on? Win that state, had baby bro Lil Nate on the team, and then, yeah. you know, he one of the first ones to come behind you. But look at everybody else on down to Murray and Porter Jr. and everything that's going on now. How, like, you legit – are viewed as as like the godfather out there. You know, obviously JT is one of them dudes, but I feel like you even more so than him just because of your connection to the way you still there and you still pop balling at the Pro-Am and all of those different things. How was it for you to make that impact starting at Rainier Beach? Yeah, I think to be honest with you, Doug Christie like did it 10 years before me. And then there was kind of a disconnect, you know what I mean? And so when you're living it in real time, especially where we come from, like, Seattle, in Seattle, everybody would say Rainier Beach is the worst school. And everybody like, oh, that's the worst school in the mm. whole city. Like, everybody knows that. So we take a certain pride with that. We're like, no, nah, it's, it's almost like the rose that grew from the concrete. If you can mm. make it out of here, you can make it anywhere. And so mm -hmm. there's authenticity and a realness to it. And so if you look at the guys, right, if you look at myself and look at Nate and look at Kevin Porter Jr. and DeJounte Murray, the, the realness to all of us is the same. Like, it ain't like all this dude went Hollywood or this dude was this and that. It's right. like, nah, this is who he is. And he's going to embrace that. He's going to show you the real side of him, flaws and all. Mm -hmm. And so when you wear something like that, the whole community, like, becomes a part, right? They can all stick out their chest a little bit. Like, yeah, we, we know we're successful too. And I love, because I was at uh, Seattle Children's probably a couple months back, and an older Asian gentleman it was like, you know, he's a doctor. There's like, yeah, I want you to rent beach too. And so to see people from different walks of life kind of be proud that, they came from this area and were successful. Like we have lawyers. We have actually a lawyer that somebody worked for Team Jordan. Mimi Asha, mm -hmm. Mimi Hunter. But like to see different people, not just in athletics, but to be successful in life, it's like, it's a special community. So winning it here was everything. Yeah, them bucket gillers are coming out of there. Cause that Kevin Porter. <laughs> oh, oh, he's serious. Ooh, he's, he's serious. He's <laughs> serious. Uh, wait till, wait till you really get comfortable. He's yeah, serious. Yeah, that's what that is. Nice. Yeah. I want to talk about 
the next generation after you. I know it was guys that, that's from Seattle that came before you. Yeah. But I'm talking about them guys that came, Matthew, the Martell Webster's, the Isaiah yeah. Thomas, them Brandon Roy's, like yeah. them, them, them dogs, them Nate, Nate Dang, Rob, man, yeah. Nate Rob, you know what I'm saying? Like these guys that came after you and man, and all of them was boys. Like, like let's talk about just the next generation, especially B. Roy, because I was in Portland when B. Roy got there. And yeah. like, this dude was that Dude, I can't, I just, <laughs> I wanted him to play so long. Cause like, when I seen him go against Kobe, he reminded me when D-Wade played Kobe. Yeah. Like he he wasn't scared of the competition. He wanted to play and, and compete. And B-Roy was, oh my God, I tell people about him all the time. But, but them next generation, they all came after you. They all yeah. screaming your name of the one that they seen. If all they didn't get a chance to see the Doug Christie's and you know, everybody right. else. So quick story about B-Roy and Q I tell you, the first time we played him, we go over the scout report. I'm like, he can go left, he can go right, he can post, he can handle, he can, he can pass, he can rebound, he can do everything. And D Lee and then was like, man, like you talk like he Jordan. I'm like, man, I'm just telling you, he ain't got no weaknesses. Man, I'm, telling got no weaknesses. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, like he's serious. But um, Nate, Isaiah, Martell, Spencer, B, Terrence Williams, Will Conroy. Like yeah. all these dudes, man. Like T. Will, T. Will, shout out T. Will, shout out like, T. Will, so, mm -hmm. Dejounte Murray, Kevin Porter, Zach Levine, yeah. right? Yeah. Brad, Zach Levine, right? yeah, yeah. Like it's it's crazy because for me it was Doug Christie. Like he was the one that took me and scooped me and took me under his wing. And if he was at the gym at seven o'clock, he said you can come. I'll be out there six thirty waiting on him. Wait up! I'm gonna be. I don't want your. I don't want your phone number. I don't want no money from you. Just show me how to get it. Show me what being a pro is. He was the first person I seen with like a foam roll stick. This mm. back in, in, in 98, you know what I mean? Like he, he's, he's doing ankle weight workouts. So I'm like, all right. So he did it for me and it, it paid off like crazy. So I'm like, I'm gonna do it for the next generation. And I didn't want to just pick one guy. I wanted everybody. So there's an eighth grader right now who can text Zach Levine, text me, can text B-Roy, can text these guys, right? Yeah. So I never left, I always came home. So was, even though I was playing in Chicago, New York, wherever, it was like, I was always Seattle, yeah. right? So Nate Rob is, is seeing, they all, like, we going at each other in the summer, steel sharp and steel. So yeah. we're going at each other. Mm -hmm. And they, if they may get the best of me that day. So imagine the confidence, I'm in the league doing it, and they in college or high school, right. and they got the best of me. They're like, man, I can do it then. And you just had a whole generation, right? Yeah. And we were just all connected. We were all connected, and we competed against each other. And Seattle's had players long before, but once the AAU scene came on, it was like the rest of the country found out about it. And now you see one from your own turf, like right there, maybe. Yeah, it gives same you a whole streets you talking about. You yeah, grew it gives up you a whole different they, field And they coming. All yeah, of them. They, they steady coming. coming. They steady building. And they still steady more building. coming. Yeah, we got they more still coming more coming. Oh, they, they yeah. don't steady shoot out. Shout out to Isaiah Thomas getting that job with the Pelicans, man. Absolutely. I'm, I'm happy out, for man. him because I've been waiting for Me him too. to get his shot to show what he's been doing. Because he used to kill your favorite points, guys, at some point in time. <laughs> Murder. My man, my man, five nine, averaged almost 30 points. You know that though. Straight on, up. Man. Give him the business. <laughs> yes, sir. Tell, tell me this though. Like when you what was it like for you? And it is it's crazy because we were all there together. But at the draft, let's I want to go back to our draft. Yeah. How 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 was that for you to walk across that stage and shake David Stern hand and just have that moment? Like we we were actually some of the few interviews to get to go to the green room and be there yeah. and be a part of that. Like, how was that for you? Q, it was, it was unbelievable because you know how it is. Y'all, and when I, it's funny, cause when I say y'all know how it is, like y'all truly know how it is. Yeah. Like, it's something totally different, right? So, you know, you hear all these things, all oh, this person's going here, this person's going there. As kids, we all trying to map out the draft, who's going where and this yeah. and that. And we all, you know, some got it right, some got it wrong. But, like, to be able to, because just a year and a half ago, I was in high school. You know what I'm saying? And so to be able to, when I put my name in the draft, people was like, especially local papers, right. they was like, oh man, imagine walking in the gym, everybody knows your name, your game, and now you're about to be playing in Istanbul or, you know, over in China, because they just think I didn't think I was going to get drafted. Mm -hmm. So in a year and a half, going from that to shaking David Stern's hand, it was like a movie. It really was like a movie. Like and everything for was you, a like, it, it, I forgot that too, because you was like, because you left early, you were one of the few people that actually went to the Chicago Combine 
and turned it out and went and played and competed and went from like, like oh, they was like, he might be a second oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> he went there and it was like, no, no, he yeah. top 10 after that. Like, he left from Chicago camp, like, no, no, he top 10. All I mean, we walked up in there. We walked up in there. I just told you, I saw y'all walking there yeah. like Star. I'm like, man, that's, bro, I'm in camp and I'm looking. I'm like, damn, that's Q and D Rich. I mean, that's Q and D Miles right there. Like, damn. I'm looking in awe of y'all. Like, I'm truly yeah. looking. Y'all two walked in camp one of the last days, bro. I'll never forget. Yeah. Q had on, I think, a Jordan outfit with a cutoff on. And I'm walking yes. with him. They go Q and D Miles, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, for real. Like, that was crazy to me. So I went from not being drafted. They like, you crazy. Why are you putting your name in the draft? Yeah. To being a top 10 pick in top three days. Top 10 pick. Because, bro, I'm going to tell you, that's the longest thing I've ever said. I came to Chicago camp late. I wasn't even going. Mm. And my college coach called me like, man, get down here now. He was like, get down here. You can turn this out. Come down here right now. Mm. I'm like, all right. So I missed the first day. Then I played, mm. only played three games. At Moody Bible. But at the time they said, at Moody Bible. At the time they said I couldn't shoot. They was like, oh, he's an okay shooter. And so I was prepping for that the whole time. And at the time they had to do 10 three-pointers. So I do, bro, I make eight out of nine in my last one. I bank it from the corner. I don't know how you, you bank it from the corner. Right. It went nine for 10. I said, oh. Okay, well, man, this is just my day. So then we're right. going through the testing, and my groin's kind of hurt. And at the time, uh, the Seattle Sonics trainer was running the whole testing program. And he knows, like, you know, I, I wouldn't jump like y'all, but I could dunk and jump. And so I wasn't jumping high. He was like, oh, Crawford's hurt. So they said, Crawford's hurt. He's done. So I played three games, bro. And I went from nothing to top 10 like that. Mm, I remember. It was like a media rising. Well, I remember it. So yeah. how uh, when you finally heard your name though? When you heard your name and you heard well, it before the name, y'all know the cameras come around. Yeah. And so they said with the eighth pick and the cameras come around, I'm like, and it said the <laughs> Cleveland Cap. And I saw it, I'm like, oh, they made some made a mistake. I ain't work out for Cleveland. I ain't talk to them. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what? They called me, bro, and I put my hat on, shook everybody's hand, sent, and, and, and did the slow walk up to, to David Stern, rest in peace. And then I'm doing a press conference talking about Cleveland. And they said, hey, you've been traded to Chicago. And I said, man, I always love Chicago. You know, right. I thought I was going there. And I don't know if y'all remember the day of the, the draft, we, we know you eat and everything. I had an all Bulls gear. I had on a Bulls cut off, some Bulls shorts, some mm. jewelry, a, a black bandana, and some J's on. All Bulls gear. So it was, it was fitting that I went there at night. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Like, then you get there, you there with the rookie of the year. You know what I'm saying? You get there, Elton Brand is there. Elton Brand, yeah. You know, they're trying to move some things around to get some pop. How was that for you your first year with the Bulls? It was crazy because y'all, I looked at y'all, to be honest with you, I looked at y'all like us on the West. Yeah. Because we was the two youngest teams in the league. Yeah. Y'all and us, right? Yep. It was me at the time. It was me and uh, Elton and Ron Artest. Ron Artest, mm-hmm. yeah. Right, right. And AJ Guy and Khalid L.M.E. We was, you yeah. know, we was young over there. Yo. AJ yeah. Guy, shout out AJ. Arthur James. So, yeah, so he was, um, Elton was like the guy. Everybody knew it, like 2010, put it in right. the book. Mm-hmm. And so once we played through that year, and I'm still figuring out my way, I ain't really got no real vets to show me the way. Yeah. You know, and then um, we trade Elton, and we get Eddie and Tyson. Eddie Tyson next year. And then it, it was my boy. I you trade know I mean? Elton so, to us. And we gave uh, yeah, y'all, y'all gave Tyson. Tyson. Yeah, for Tyson. Yep. Yep. And we yep. got Tyson in, in EC, and it was my boys. And then we really was all tight, like tight, tight. Yeah. You know, we all around the same age and, and everything. I didn't play much my first year, so we all felt like rookies together. And it just took off, right? And and so it was dope to go through that looking back, like them, all them experiences, being young, being green, not really knowing, trying to figure it out, having good games, having bad games, just the whole journey and the whole process. And so I love my time in Chicago, like, because I, I felt like I was really entrenched in Chicago, too. Like, I was on some street, like. Nah, listen, I, this, that's, <laughs> what real, I want, that's what I want to talk about, though, like, because yeah. I can remember, do you remember the game at IIT? I want to say, uh, I know it was me and you, was Paul on our team, P-Mac? Me, you, Paul McPherson, and Corey McGetty. And 50. So look, yeah. bro, look, look, this boy here, this is the first time, like, I really didn't see Ma, like, all right, going to N1, like Rucker Park Street Ball mixtape mode, where this man just started dribbling down the court backwards, bro, under his legs, doing something with his legs, going backwards up the court. And when he get cross half court and the man act like he won't play with him, he about to ha-ha him the wrong way. <laughs> he ain't go on him. Like, bro, 
When I say like like he said, he was really he was really on the ground level. He was at hoops with us. He was in the he was yep. playing at Pro Am IT. He was he was he was in it. He was in it. Hey, and D, if you could have been there, bro, like put it this way. It's another thing I don't think I ever said. The, the IT that Q was talking about, D Miles, D Rose told me that that was the first time he ever seen a pro in person. Mm. I'm like, damn, you was a kid in the crowd. Things like, yeah, bro. Like, he's like, I, I loved you coming up. Like, you was one of the first pros I ever seen in person. I'm like, dang. That's what's but up. we had it rocking. Me, Q, 50, <laughs> Paul Mc, We just put on show. We didn't lose. Crazy, dumb. We never lost. I mean, we played Twan Walker. We played everybody. We put on shows. I remember, remember hits from BET? I remember yeah, he was at one game. Hits from the street. Yeah, he was at one game. And you got all these dudes dunking. You got us shooting threes and just put... If and the crowd start going crazy, you had the young Will Bynum coming up, right? Yeah. Like just all them dudes, man. It just those like, like I people don't really realize like IT and hoops. Like I know at hoops, you know, TTG didn't allow cameras and stuff like that. But bro, the 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 the, the wars and the battles that was waged inside those gyms. Oh man, man. they like yeah, they said these walls could talk like boy, it's been some of the greatest hoop sessions ever, bro. Up hoops, bro. bro. Q, I don't know if you was the other day we played when Jay-Z and Beyonce came to watch. Mm-hmm. Bro, they came to watch a pickup game with Michael Jordan. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this is crazy. Ray Allen's in there. Penny's in there. Everybody's in there. That was, Y'all that, in there, like, it was crazy. But they came to watch Michael Jordan at a pickup game. Straight I'm up. like, man, this is unbelievable. So at that in, in those moments, and y'all know, like, when all the coaches are gone, it's just man on man, pride for pride. We can both do what we want. We're going to see who's who and what's what. And so yeah, me playing with Jordan, it gave me the ultimate confidence. I got the best player ever saying, man, you got game. You come yeah. on, you gonna come hang with me. You on my yeah. team. Man, I'm like, what? And, all right, and that was it. That changed my whole life, my whole career. I'm That's like, how this I feel. Saying this, That's how he did us. That's Mike gonna do that. that. He, gonna, he gonna point you out and say, oh, no, nah, he on my team. No, nah, he played yeah, with he me now. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I'm like, oh, I can't. I don't care what nobody said to me. No coach, no GM, no writer, no Newspaper, no nothing. I got the best player ever saying you got game. That's uh, it. Only true, no true story. AD Mass, tell him, tell him. That's how we found out who Chris Paul was. Yeah. They had Chris Paul at camp. You know, it was all of them guys there, you know, Feltons and 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 right. you know, all of these guys at the time, they were all there. And you know, like after the first, it wasn't even a good first day. It was like, man, we get to pick in the team. You know, we we there. MJ always gonna put us on his team, whatever. So we MJ like we got, you know, it's me, MJ Black. And he was like, they was like, all right, you need one of the high school kids. He like, he chose Chris Paul for well, I don't know why, whatever. He chose Chris Paul. That man played with us for the day. Each one of us left the gym like, I don't know who this little motherfucker is. Like, yeah. this little dude. Yeah, problem. <laughs> he cold. Like, I had never cold, seen nobody cold. that young control the floor, the control ball, the yeah, game, yeah. and be able to set people up like that. He was still in all high school us. at this point. And all us got fed. All us got MJ, fed. Like we sitting there icing up after the game. Like, hey, <laughs> like homeboy. Hey, and, I, and, I like, CP, and I play with CP five years, bro. And he'll tell you we go to each other's room. I go to his room most. He had this week. We go in a room watching different games. Like he loved hoop like that. Like yeah. we can talk basketball anytime, anywhere. Know the history of it. All you see is such and such do that move. All you see that team how they came back at the six minute mark and did that play. All you see, that, you know what I mean? So. He's a basketball genius, bro. And yeah. every team he's went to, shout out CP, every team he's went to has gotten better. The yeah. Phoenix thing right now, I already knew what it was going to be. I didn't know they was going to be yeah. number two in the West. Yeah, but I'm I, like, oh, they, that's the same. Good same. You knew they were going to be better. And, and they need to start better. saying on, his name for MVP, man. I don't Absolutely. know why they not mention it, but they need to start even saying his, his numbers, name for MVP. And he averaging like 17 and nine. Even his numbers don't justify everything he's bringing to that team in that organization. Straight up. How you feel about the way the way I feel like I feel like Devin Booker get disrespect? Like you somebody who played Absolutely. on the same team with this oh, kid. Yeah. And I feel like he's been an all-star for at least three years running and he Most really definitely. kinda get, you know, I feel I, I understand as a person who I guess you would say is part of the media now. I get it. Like who you gonna take off? They always ask that question. I get it, but like in my book, this has been my argument for him and Bradley Bill for a few years now. Like I've never seen a person average 30 and he's not an all-star. Like, it just don't happen. In, in what yeah. league? Like he averaged thirty, bro. Like I'm, like I feel you. I know somebody's supposed to have a record. He's supposed to win, but like we gotta, we gotta define these terms, bro. Because I don't care. Like you and I both, all, all of us throughout high school and stuff. Like 
We didn't win and made all tournament or whatever, even if you don't win it because I was putting up 40. Like, you probably just put in work. Man, this man, like, they've been averaging 30s, bro. Like, legit 30 balls. Like, how yeah. are they not uh, acknowledged as one of the best? And, like, I'm talking about as far as awards and all of that stuff goes. Like, it's but crazy, you would put bro. somebody that's, like, averaging 19 or 20 on the best team when right. he's not he's not having a better year than this guy averaging 30, in my opinion. Period. Period. We used to think All-Star Game was the best players, period, right? And, and the thing about it is crazy is his book is a winner. And I didn't know that till I got there with him. I'm like, mm-hmm. maybe he's just one and ones that put up numbers. And nah, he cares. We play one on one every day, mm-hmm. practice each other every day. And he cared about winning. Like, he's a historian too. His yeah. dad, shout out his pops, Melvin. He played overseas with my guy, Will Conroy. And he just, he's he's bred to win. But yeah. he, you can't have him win if you ain't got pieces around him. At like, all. so what, what are you showing him? So I knew when him and CP got together what it was because Book is a dog. Don't mm-hmm. be fooled by the, the curly hair, none of that. Like, Book <laughs> is a dog, like a dog dog. He wants yeah. it. He wants to be great, and he's chasing greatness. And now people are starting to notice, but I think his peers, like, we know his peers always knew. Yeah. What year was that when you, you felt like, man, I kind of can, I figured it out a little bit. I know you was, you was yeah. journeyman and you've been to a couple of teams, a couple of coaches, whatever, but what, where was that, that one year you was like, I, 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 I kind of find where I'm comfortable at. My, I'm sinking my feet in to, yeah. to get comfortable. It was the, it was the second half of my third year. So my first year, I didn't play much. My second year, I tear my ACL. All right. Mm-hmm. And then, hoops. Boom. At hoops. hoops, and, and then everybody my... got banned from hoops. All the Bulls players got yep. banned from hoops. Got Cross banned said that. no mas. They, they didn't want me there anyway. Close exactly. to the NBA, from but the I really beginning, got they didn't want that. you there. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so uh, the third year, I'm coming. I'm like, okay, this is the year, right? And now we draft Jay Williams. Shout out Jay. And at the time, now I'm three years in. Now, I'm not a has been, but I ain't really proved myself. I'm three years in. He's fresh off of coming off like a Reggie Bush. Right. Yeah. College basketball. College basketball career. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. He number two pick, so of course he don't get the first crack. Would have been number and one if it wasn't for Yao. Yeah, exactly. And at the time, what really messed it up was our coach didn't want to play us together. He just figured mm-hmm. we was kind of too small. So he's like, man, one's playing and one's not. One's going to be a starter, one's going to be a backup. We guys are split minutes, whether it's 30, 18, 24, 24, whatever it is. And so, with that, we went at it every day, and I never found no solid footing. And then the second half of that year, it's like, you know, we're going to play you guys together. It's one thing, season's over, y'all, y'all just play. And so, like, the last 20 games, I averaged 19 and 7. And I played with Jay. We played good together. And we was like, coming in the next year, we're going to play good right from the start. And then the motorcycle accident happened. Mm-hmm. Right? And so, that end of the third year, when I averaged 19 and 7, the last 20, 25 games, I was like, all right, I figured out the NBA game. I got it now. Mm-hmm. I got it, right? And that's when I was like, okay, next year, no matter what, you know, if things don't take off. In my last year in Chicago, I led the team in points and assists. And we didn't win much, but at that point, I hit the ground running. So when I got to New York after that, I already knew what it was. So that ended the third year kind of solidified what I thought I knew. Tell me this. How how was it from, from your perspective? Because I know how it was for, you know, for me when everybody, all of us around the league, when that, car, when that motorcycle accident happened for Jay, because that, I mean, obviously that, immediately impacted you and your situation and what would happen yeah. the following year. Like, what was that like in real time? You going through getting the call or hearing however you heard? How did you hear that it happen? It was crazy because myself, him, and Jalen Rose were just in the gym that day. Because, mm-hmm. you know, the Bulls, they want you there at a certain time. After right. I think it was with June 1st. You got to be there pretty much the whole way. So we right. was in the gym that day. And so I remember Jalen Rose said, hey, man, be careful on that bike. And, you know, Jay's like, I got it. It's all good. So he's like, all right. Later that day, we get the call, and I thought it was fake. Like, I'm like, nah, we just saw him. We was just in the gym. There ain't no way. Right. And at that point, you just worry about his health. You know what I mean? Like, man, is he going to be all right? Like, and he got later on, I think a day or two later, I found out, like, man, he may not walk again. Like, it was that bad. Right. And that's when I'm like, damn. Like, and, you know, like, it went from a competitive thing when he first came and I first came because we was all the same high school class. Exactly, so I knew him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it went from that to like, as a friend, our, our relationship really grew, especially when we started playing together. It wasn't competition. Like, I want you to be good. You want me to be good. We're going to be good together. Right? And so our friendship was really solid. And so when that happened, it hurt me. I was like, damn, like, man, I felt bad for him. They like, he may not walk again. The Bulls could take his conch. All that stuff that goes into it, like, you right. know, when it's fresh off. So 
I was just, I, I felt really bad for him. And then I was like, man, like now I'm just out here by myself again. And then we drafted Kirk Heinrich and it went from there. But that's one of my, one mystery I've always had. Like if me and him could have continued to play together and grow together to see where it would have went because he had game. Jay was yeah, cold. Yeah, he had game, Jay man. Cold, y'all definitely, y'all right? definitely was nice, man. Y'all had a young yeah. little squad. Yeah. Like Tyson and Eddie back there. Like y'all was, like y'all remind me of us. <laughs> like yeah. it's a young squad that with a lot of potential. Now I uh, wanted to ask you, like I know you, you fucked up a lot of people off the dribble. Mm-hmm. Which one is one of your favorite ones or one that stick out to you or one of the ones that they always send you every day on Instagram? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I ain't even on Instagram, so I be having to get the reports on that. I heard I'll be on there a, a little bit. But um, I said I said Ray Allen before because that was Jesus Showsworth. Like, that was yeah. he got game. I feel like that was my life coming up in high school. And yeah. that's one. But if I had to say one now, I would say probably the, the Kirk Heinrich one. And that's probably because I literally made it up on the spot, like yeah. literally on the spot, like literally as I'm coming down, it's what you gonna do, what you gonna do, like boom, go over his head. And that's why you ain't seen it again because I had never practiced it or nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and say the Kirk Heinrich one. Oh, that one was okay. tough because Kirk's a great defender and it was one of my first time, I think maybe my first time back in Chicago after I left too, to play. So I'm gonna I'm go with the Kirk Heinrich one on this one. I, it's one It's one that be sticking out to me that, that's real nice because he like Paul, the one with Wesley Matthews. Like when you, when you you yank back on her and then he paused, he looked at the ref and then he think he for the shoot, he jumped again and he, <laughs> he still hey, one more time. That was that was the perfect that was a perfect counter punch because I knew I was bop, bop, and I knew I'm like oh he's gonna come again. I felt it. I'm like I can feel it. I'm <laughs> it like, like he's gonna pause. run up again. I know he is. I and Wes, you gotta think Wes is a hard playing dude, nah, right? Play, like, yeah, yeah, he yeah. He ain't gonna give up on no play. So I I, I factor all that in in two <laughs> seconds. He's a yeah. hard playing dude. I feel his body. I look at his body. He's gonna come forward, and so he did it. It was Crazy. like just the perfect punch at the perfect time. This is the serial killer part of him coming out. Yeah, what I'm saying. saying that's like this ain't nah, normal, but I hear you. I, I literally processed those four thoughts in two seconds, and I'm yeah. like, oh, he's coming. Now I you just gotta make the shot, and that was yeah. yeah, that was that was that was tough. That was a tough one because he started talking to the ref mid play. So that was that was yeah mid tough. play the middle yeah. play. <laughs> You're a person that loved the combinations of dribbling and, and yeah. what we witnessing what we witnessing from Kyrie right now yeah. with the combinations that he putting up, the combinations that he putting on everybody. I know you pay attention to the in details of, of that, but the year he having and how he putting these combinations up and coming off with it with a left floater or or off the one leg off the backboard, just tell us what you think about what he's doing and how he's taking the dribble game to a whole nother level by people getting the opportunity to really see another person with the dribbling skills of his caliber. He's an artist. First and foremost, like he's an artist. He's, he's creating art right now. Like before all, he's always had a canvas to paint, but he had more responsibility with that canvas. Like, yeah, you have a canvas, but you got this area to kind of do what you do. You gotta be a point guard. You gotta do this. Now James Hart is a point guard. Kai, just go paint your canvas. So not only, you could see it in his, yeah. his, and we worked out together a couple summers ago. He came up here and we worked out. And you could see it in his thinking, like he's, he's challenging himself while he's doing stuff. Oh, let me see if this will work. Oh, this would be cool. Oh, you gonna do this? Like, he's just a, 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 an artist right now. And you're seeing his, the most beautiful painting that you may ever see when it comes to skill and, and the stuff he's doing. Like, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. It's beautiful to watch. And, we know he's must see TV, but he's on like some artistic stuff right now. And he's he's allowing all of us to see it. Let me explain this. Like I, I got a chance to peek, to have like a little sneak peek into it, right? So you know, I do uh do the magic games, pre halftime, post game broadcast, yeah. right? So I'm sitting there one game. This was a uh, couple weeks back. They playing the Knicks, the, the team, the Magic playing the Knicks, but they away. Now, you obviously with all the COVID stuff, we don't travel like we normally would if we was doing all this. So we stay, we stay, we do it straight out of the Amway. We at the Amway arena, we sitting up and what we normally do our thing. And this, at this point, they got us out on the terrace, on the little terrace area. So we sitting at the court down and everything, but there's nobody out there. We sitting there, we doing a show, we doing a show. At one point, I turn, I hear a ball bouncing, right? Turn around, it's Kyrie. They play Brooklyn the next night on the back to back. Even though they off in New York, they come home and play Brooklyn in, in, in Orlando the next night. So I'm like, oh, okay, Kyrie about to come in and get some work, right? So, you know, I finished doing the pregame. 
I turn around, I say what's up to. I didn't matter if I didn't say what's up. I watched him. I'm watching him do his thing. Bruh. Crazy. I watched the man for a good, it had to be good five and a half, six minutes real time. Maybe more, probably like 10 minutes or something. He ain't do nothing without a left hand. Everything was like, I'm talking about, nothing was a right hand shot. Like, like how everybody saw him shoot, like I, I saw him the other day shoot like a crazy left hand banker. I watched him do all of these things for like 10 minutes or so. No, no right hand, nothing. It was all, it was like, cause I remember seeing Steve Nash do some of this stuff when I played with Nash. Now, you know how Nash yeah. do that little layout shot in the lane. He would just do stuff like that all the time. Like he, part of his practice, he'd be, when he getting shots, so he'd do, He'll do some little handles to then just lay out with that little shot, do it a different way. And so it was like, people might think that's like, he don't ever shoot like that again, but he did it. Like I, I watched Kyrie straight for however many long, however long it was, he didn't do nothing with the right hand. This was all left from like little uh, 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 spin around floaters, little scoops, little bank shots, like all type of different angles that you might think in a game. Like how did he, he practicing all type of stuff, bro. I'm talking about hitting, spinning it off the board. It's crazy. That was just the left hand portion. Yeah, I'm telling you, we when we played and we was always he came up here for like three weeks to a month, and we were always on opposite team. And I'm telling y'all, like he would do something, and I'd be like, "Ooh, that was that was video game ish, right?" Then I would come down and do something. He looking like, "Ooh, that was." Right, and so it's like when you got two dope rappers in a cypher on the same song, right? And they just going at it. They, it's the game within the game. Well, you said that mm -hmm. on camera, say this, and we was going. You gotta think, there's no coaches now, so we got the same freedom, everything. Like we just going at it. And if we ever had taped that, it was some of the most like beautiful basketball to play and be a part of. I had Bill Russell come watch Mr. Bill Russell. Zach Levine was in those runs. Dejounte Murray, but it, we were me and Kyra always on the same team. I mean, on opposite teams, and just going at it. Like it was dope. Dope, dope that's stuff. that iron sharpening iron, man. Yeah, just, just absolutely. To see it and and get that down. You can't can't beat that. That's that that stuff that stick with you forever. Like when you get that forever. good hoop like that, right? I want to talk about something that I know we can talk hours about. But we ain't gonna go that long. I want to talk about you and I's New York Knicks era. I tell people Cute. all the time, listen, I tell people all the time, shout out, shout out Ben Lyons. He going to be focused in on this. This is my <laughs> man, one of the biggest Nick fans ever. He, I tell him all the time, we could, it's so many different of us that uh, we could write whole books. New York without Times, number one bestsellers without we could a have shadow a, of a doubt. We could have a movie just on any one of the mirrors you want to put. <laughs> we can just focus on that year and hey. do a series, bro. Like, it, ha, I, I, it was so has, much has, has there ever, has there ever been, I know for me, I can't, I can't look at my career and say, I have a crazier capsule than my time with the Knicks. No. If no. you look from start to finish your time no. with the Knicks, has there been a crazier? No. And I mean, I'm not, I don't mean when I, uh, Nick fans, when I say I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean it just in oh, every which way is crazy. <laughs> like I got so much love for New York in the, in the time, like some, some of my best homeboys and everything. Like people think it's worse than it is because we was losing, but like you, you, you can, you can attest that we was all solid. We had a great time. Like, oh, we, we had, had a great time. Cute, cute. In my 20 years in the NBA, in that five year span with New York, bro, it's not even close. Like it was, bro, do you remember the time when we lost a game we should have won? And Isaiah was walking home in the snow from the airport. Hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. We can't, oh, we can't. See, hey, look. You remember this? This what I remember. This was a funny. This you know Nate. Nate always at the center of something happening funny. Always. Like, you know we all. You know how it is. Like so, we definitely didn't. We was at this point. We the bad news bears, my boy. You know how they say a, a bad team gonna find a way to lose. We found yep. a way to lose some game. We weren't supposed to lose, and you know Zeke was one of them people. Man, he didn't lose. It wasn't what like he ain't built that way. And like he would be like, you know, I could see myself like him a lot of the time. You know how I used to be. We lose. So, Oh, you'd be hot. Zeke was so hot. Zeke was one of the people like, better not be a pin drop on the bus plane, none of that. When we do something like that, better not be one smile or crack a joke or a laugh or none of that. None of that. No music, none of that. None Zeke of that. out the plane, you know, everybody got the plane, coach in the front. Zeke out the plane, he just bolted. 
I ain't even peeping at first. <laughs> we leaving. I put Nate Rob hit him like, hey, hey, did y'all uh I seen Zeke walking. Like I pulled over, asked me want to ride. He just looked at me. I just pulled up slow. <laughs> hey, Q, he was walking so slow. Like he, he had his suit, had his suit jacket collar pulled up, remember? <laughs> oh my God. And then I remember the next day he came to practice and it looked like he hadn't slept from the night before, bro. It looked like he brushed his hair backwards. Like he was just, I said, man, my Zeke is going through. It looked like he brushed his hair backwards on purpose just to show y'all, to show all of us he wasn't playing. And he was talking like this. Three on two, two on one. Like, I can't even look at y'all. Y'all disgust me. <laughs> it was, <laughs> and that's my, he, I, I wore number 11 because of Zeke. I love Zeke to death. Man. But boy, he got his message across them two days. I couldn't, I'm like, man, Zeke Straight ain't up. playing with no losing. We better win this next game. I want to ask you about like your coaches. Like, you know, you played 20 years and you, you've been on teams and you like, man, I didn't get a chance to make the playoffs. So I felt you when you was like, man, it took me this many years <laughs> to finally get to the playoffs. But like your coaches, all the coaches over here, which was that one coach that you felt like he, he knew you? Like y'all, 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 it was yeah. different. Like he was like, he he got how you was and what type of player and what you trying yeah. to bring to this game. Which was coach was that? I would say Mike Woodson. I would say Herb Williams. I would say obviously Doc Rivers and Isaiah, of course, those four. What I found out about myself is going through all those coaches was I enjoy playing for people that actually played at this level before because mm -hmm. they know you can go through missing five shots in a row. Oh, it's all right. You know, they know they're not going to hold your weaknesses because we all got weaknesses. They're not going to hold your weaknesses against you, they, but they're going to uplift your strengths. Yeah. Right. And so for me, Isaiah, Mike Woodson, Doc, they were like, they really understood me. And I enjoyed playing for Larry Brown once I figured him out. You know what I mean? Like he's probably the best teacher that we had. Like it, it don't, it don't feel like that at first. You'd be frustrated, like, man, I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing it. But by the end, you're like, damn, he taught me a lot. Bro, you know what I mean? tell people that all the time. They're like, oh, yeah. you know, people add like, what, what was that? I'm like, yo, I love Coach Brown to death. And like you said, once, once you figure him out, he figure out. He was one of the realest, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it was, it, it was, it was definitely a little, a little learning curve we had to go through with him. But for like, sure, absolutely, for sure. LB was, LB was a goat. And like you say, when you talk about Zeke, bro, I think I just said this the other day, D Mountain. We were sitting back there talking and stuff. I was talking about Eddie, but it's got the same thing for him. Like Eddie and Maul, bro. Like at that point, I hadn't really seen no coach put that type of like watch them instill confidence into individual players the way you remember how I was telling like you remember how when we first that first year when Eddie became dominant how that was Zeke's first thing when he took over as the head coach he let it the be the ball known. goes into Vegas the it stays in Vegas that's Eddie it. and Zach are Vegas and it this was before Zach came. This was when yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, East City had that one stretch where he went 20, 25 some games, was straight getting 20 and whatever he was doing. Like, Eddie was dominant, bro. He had Eddie mind where he was out of there. Now, I got hurt when Zebo came just because yeah. of that dynamic. And it was nothing between them. It was just the way they nah, played. Just the it just it hurt was. the dynamic. And, but that that first season, bro, and I'm talking about you, like I can like bro be games like this. And you remember what I'm about to say when I say this, bro. We watching film or something. And we about to play, we about to play Kobe, right? And they showing this, and like, you know, Zeke standing up at the board, and Zeke say, yeah, you yeah, ain't never know. He say, he say look, you know I'm about to go. He say, look, he say he Kobe going crazy, right? Like he like, look, yeah, look, that, you see you motherfucker going crazy. Like they they he going crazy. And he go to the next clip and he got Maul on next, he say. We got one too. He we can go crazy. So I said, look, the whole room. So I said, <laughs> somebody was like, hold on, he just paired them all to Kobe. I was like, yes, he did. I was like, hey, <laughs> he did. That's exactly that was, what he said. That's exactly what he said. We got one too. I said, oh, I said, boy, you know how that feel to have that man who said that? Straight up. Man, D Miles, he said, it was Kobe. He said, that's Kobe. He said, we got our own. He said, he so said, look. We got one too. He said, he, he ain't got the green light. He got the fluorescent green light. Fluorescent <laughs> <laughs> green light. So he I'm said, like, what? Hey. He said that for the whole <laughs> team, bro. Hey, that's that's that, that's that's 15 years breaking news right there. I ain't never said that. Straight that's up. exactly what he said. I real nothing up, here, bro. man. You know, <laughs> you, know what kind of, you know what kind of confidence they give a player? Like, y'all know when he yeah. said something like that. 
Like, man, what? And it was jumped through a brick wall like, for him. Like, coach tell you that you out of any coach tell you that you out of here, but like that was Zeke though. That's Zeke. I'm wearing wearing my number because of him. He's saying this. Like, come on, man. That 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 changed. That was like, man. Yeah, Dima, if you could have been in a room that day, some people like, man, what? And he stood firm. He stood firm on it. He stood firm on it. We got one too. (laughs) Circled it around with the little (laughs) guys. He sure did. He sure did. For real. Shout out Zeke, man. Like. I feel like the six man of the year award should be praised. It should be something that's 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 a, a outstanding award. Like, cause it, it means something to teams to have a six man that can, can right. do things. And I think before the early, the earlier days, they weren't big on like who, oh yeah, you want six man, that's, that's, you want six man. But you made six man popular. You made six man, I feel like you made six man where a person like, man, that's a, that's a big accomplishment, like to 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 win this and to get on a team where you contributing off the bench on the winning team, and this is a team sport. So, how do you feel to to see people like Lou Will and and see all these other guys that's 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 really excited and want to win that six man of the year award yeah. and want to get it? I, I, like I say, I can't remember it being so popular until you start racking them on up. Yeah, it, to be honest with you, D Miles, like I never, I had never come off the bench consistently where, like, where I was a six man. But I got to a point where I was tired of losing, and then from there, I'm like, man, I'll do whatever it takes. And so I had to trick myself mentally, like, okay, pick up in the summer, I ain't gonna be on the first game. I'm gonna come on the next game. You know what I mean? And then I and the game start. I'm like, okay, now you know what? You ain't a scrub. Now you Superman. You come and save the day. Let them do their thing. You'll come save the day. And so for that to kind of like catapult to what it is now is unbelievable because in our community at least like I seen the Jason Terry's I seen the Ginobili's I seen um Ricky Pierce Dell F Shrimp Microwave I saw all those guys mm-hmm. but I didn't get the feeling Bobby that Jack Bobby Jack shout out Bobby Jack even Ben Gordon but I didn't get the feeling that our culture accepted it's kids it's, especially yeah, I mean kids right I, I see kids all the time bro in camps and in tournaments and they like man I want to be a six man because you Tyler Johnson yeah. He's the best player in the state at the time. I said, man, I was the best player in the state and I wanted to come off the bench because you did. You know what I'm saying? Like, so for it to connect to our culture like that, I never seen them like that come my way when I decided I was going to be the sixth man. So it's an honor because, like you said, it's an importance. It's a team sport. Yeah. But to make it cool, we're like, no, nah, I'm the sixth man. You know, Maul did it. I'll do it too. Like, that's that's pretty dope. Yeah, that, that definitely is. I always want, like I say, I was, I was – Happy as you, I, w- I hope they put your name on the award because you definitely oh, deserve yeah. it. And Straight up. See, Straight to see up. a Lou Will doing his thing, right? To yeah. see Jordan, Clark- Jordan Clarkson, who I hope wins it this year, do it. Yeah. That's a lot. Like, that's yeah, a like lot. it just gonna keep going. It's, it's, it's it's just seeing the guy just comfortable in that role. Like, yeah, you can yeah. go to a, you, it's a team out there that you can probably start on or, or be a starter on. Right. But what's so wrong with just sacrificing for team? And coming off the bench and being a force and being on a good team and trying to win a nice chip. And you know, and that's ain't that what, what it's about doing. for us, right? Like yeah. for me to pass the baton to Luke, then Luke passed to Jordan Clarkson. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's what it's supposed to be. When you run a race and you a team sport, all right, I ran my part now. Man, I'm passing the baton to you. Take it further. Mm-hmm. That's what it's yeah. about. I uh I want to talk about Rucker Park. Ooh, I want to talk about Rucker Park and I want to yeah. talk about like how you was because like you 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 won the worldwide ballers like that's one of the things I loved about Kevin Durant like you know when yeah. he went on that world tour of all them parks Everywhere. and like yeah. when it was on <laughs> strike I was like that too. that's the culture that's a, what real hoop yeah. about it. and I remember you you know going and play with the Sean Carter song <laughs> you know what I'm saying like how was that for you to experience that Rucker Park you know we always wanted to experience that Rucker yeah, Park with so the crowd and stuff. Let me tell you how the backstory of that. So I get it. I don't ever answer. I don't even talk on the phone much, but I don't ever answer unavailable calls, right? And so I get an unavailable. I don't know why. Let me pick this up. It's Jay Z on the phone. He like, man, you gotta come to Rucker and play. And at the time, I'm still nervous. It's like Rucker, like, but it's Jay. I'm like, I can tell him no. So I'm like, all right. He's like, but we can't lose. We cannot lose. (laughs) I'm like, all right, all right. I'm coming. I said, can I bring my big fella with me? He said, yeah, bring him. So I call Eddie Curry. I'm like, EC, you got to come to Rucker, bro. He's like, oh, yeah? I'm like, man, we're going to be out there every week. They're going to fly us out there, everything. They're going to put us up. It's going to be good. He's like, all right. So I go out there. I'm nervous. Rest in peace franchise. You guys heard the song. 
my homie mm-hmm. fit my homie strict told me uh dude finish your breakfast so strict's on the bus on the way over there we're going to rucker he trying to yeah it's gonna be you playing the nba but i'm telling you when you get out here it's gonna be something you go so the first game i do my thing and i throw off the backboard and go dunk and i throw up the rock afterwards and they like oh you one of us and bro D miles and Q. I want to tell you, it was so addicting. I was only supposed to go play once, <laughs> and we start going out there every single week. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole we summer, like, oh, the whole summer. I'm like, oh, it's, it was a rush. It was a high because it's like the essence of the game. And you know, I'm out there. The first, I'm like, man, what's my nickname coming? I want the nickname. At the time, the nickname was in. So, right. I'm like, I started hitting, making buckets, and like, all right, true essence. Though. I'm like, okay, I do something else. True essence. I'm like, oh, true essence. Okay. And, and it fit me because as much as I love the game and that's like the true essence of the sport, the black top, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, think about it. Our first trainers, us, was an old dude on the court. Like, nah, man, you, you got to cut. You got to play. Right. You, gotta, you know what I mean? Like, that's how we mm-hmm. learned to play basketball. We didn't have trainers and access to it. And so for them to nickname me true essence, it just fit. And there was nothing like playing a record. There was some days I was more nervous to play that than the NBA games. That's what, like, like for real. I remember when I played that, I played with, with, with Murder Inc. Shout out, shout yeah. out Chris Gotti now. You know what I'm saying? Shout out So when I was supposed to play at the actual Rucker, it got rained in. We went to the Gauchos. Okay, you went inside. So, okay. Yeah, we played inside. So, you know, you know me, my game wasn't like the bop, 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 bop. I'm about to, I'm going to go get 40, though. I'm going to get, get this 40. 40. I'm going to this, get this 40. I'm going to get plum, get 20 rebounds, tip ins, put back, yeah. dunks, yeah. all of this. I'm going to hit block. some threes, right. post some. Yeah, I, I got, we won. I got my buckets and we do what the hell we supposed to do. Now, I ain't get no nickname and all that showtime because that wasn't my game, but you but believe. I, I didn't get the nickname the first time. I had to keep going back to get the nickname. So you yeah, ain't see, I only, you yeah, I only went that. once. Yeah, I only went once. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, though. I didn't get a chance. Every time I went, it was never raining. And it was, it was like a routine, right? So it was like, we would come in, we'd meet at the studio. It was Baseline Studio at the time. We all go on the S. Dark Carter bus, boom, go to the game, shower, boom, boom, meet up at 4040 after. It was always the same routine, like every single Very time. Nice. So the game with a blackout, the one we couldn't play, Jay had a stack with him. EC would tell you, it was me, EC, LeBron, all his boys, Sebastian. This is the game. Jay and Fat Joe about to bet. Jay was excited about it. He said, and the game was at like six o'clock. He was right. like, man, I rolled past the Rucker at 2 o'clock. There was already 10,000 people out there. Like, this was a game. It would be like the Nets and Lakers this year. Like, everybody right. knew these I remember teams. the blackout. I right. probably flew out there. LeBron called me to fly out there, and I couldn't fly because they blacked out. <laughs> they blacked out. And so this is New York City, right? We ain't thinking a blackout's going to happen. A it may be a blackout, blackout in the whole city for 30 seconds. It ain't for, like, <laughs> hours, right? Yeah. And so I remember Jay had a block of money. We all made it 40 40. We didn't know what we was going to do. And I remember he left the money somewhere. He left it. They had to have somebody go back and get it because he was going on vacation the next day, him and Beyonce. Literally the next day, he was like, win or lose, I'm leaving the next day. And so when the blackout happened, they tried to reschedule it, but he was gone. Like he was out, you yeah. know, so it couldn't happen. And then it just lost the energy and started, let's go inside yeah, the car. I that. It, it never happened, it. yeah. It never happened. Yeah. It, it probably wasn't meant to happen because that would have been the craziest outdoor game ever. Straight up. Right. Like, uh, you had a lot of teammates. If you had, yeah. to, if you could have picked four teammates that you played with to go to war with to be your to be your five, who would them other four players be? I'm going with Q. I'm going with Stack Jack. I'm going with Matt Barnes. <laughs> Ooh, man, I'm, you got me going all the way in the archives. I'm going back to right now. My mind's in Chicago, and I'm going to New York. <laughs> Man, is it by position? No, just, just if you had Whoever four of the players Nate. to go with, who you go? Make it five. Nate, cause... CP, Nate, Nate, CP, Q, Matt, and Stack. I'm coaching. Them five. <laughs> oh, and I got to have Oak. I'm tripping. I got to have Oak, too. Oh, yeah. That's general right there. Yeah, I got to have Oak, too. Hey, tell me this. How was it when, when you got, you know, you went through that little brief stretch in Golden State? That was brief, even though you dropped the 50 burger while you was there. It was still brief. How was it when you got to uh to Atlanta? Because I felt like that was a team where it was like you kind of found a home for a few years. Where it was like, all right, now he about to, you know, he about to compete in the playoffs year in and year out. And um, how how was that for you there in Atlanta? I remember one, I can't remember exactly which year, but I know y'all put me and the, the Magic out the one year. The second was, year. The second yeah, so year, okay. It- it, it was dope, Q, because I'm going to be honest with you. That was the first time, like, I had been around that many people that looked like us. 
like mm-hmm. having jobs and stuff that they were doing. I'm like, man, this is crazy. Like being in the South, you know, the whole I mean? it was town just like this, <laughs> the whole town's like that. And, and so that was dope. And then that was the first time I'm coming off the bench. Right. And now it's the first winning team I'm on. So now right. I'm starting to see like, okay, you can start your role and still get love. Like, Still get Gucci Mane to miss you in a song, or still meet with the the, the uh, people leaders of the city. Like, man, what right. you want to do? You as high as the city, everybody. I'm like, man, because you got to think. Like Joe Johnson, cold, obviously. Yeah. Bibby, cold, right? Josh was cold, but he was more on the dunk tip. Al Horford was just solid. Marvin, same thing. They was good, but just solid. So I brought a little different flavor to it mm-hmm. with the handle stuff. You know what I mean on that side of it. So right. It was a nice element to add to what they already had. They was already a playoff team. They was already nice. But I brought a little flavor to it. And the fans really took to that. You know, the city took to that. And so to be there and be on a winning team and now be noticed nationally, because you know how it is when you win, it's you get different. you could do you could do less, but get noticed more, right? Because yeah. you're always on TV. And so it was dope. And I had a lot of big moments, game winning shots in the playoffs and all that stuff on TV. And Q, since you mentioned it, that first year. Man, in Orlando, you guys, I don't, you guys beat us by average like 20, 25, something crazy. I'm like, it was the biggest route in, in the playoff first round history. And then to flip it the next year, we said, okay, they shooters is eating too much. So now we got to let Dwight go get 40. You go get 40, everybody else got to just stay cool. 40 ain't going to beat us. And we flipped it and then, you know, got got through that and then ran to an MVP, Derrick Rose, at the end of the season. But that's, he's still one of my favorites ever. Side note, shout out to Rose. Know. Shout out to yeah. Rose. Yeah, but um, yeah, so it was dope. It was dope to be like in that culture. I want to ask you, when was the first time you met MJ? And, and, and tell us about when MJ was coming to Chicago working out and stuff, and he was trying to come back for the Wizards, and you was going yeah. To, to, yeah. To, to help so him was, kind of get in, in shape. Building. You was helping yeah, the old man get in shape, you know? So, so in the draft process, my dad, my dad played at Oregon. He played with Kevin Love's dad. And he was like, man, MJ likes your game. I'm like, man, yeah, right. We have this ain't no social media. You don't know Michael Jordan. What do you mean he like my game, right? So we we going through that. Fast forward, I get drafted. I go to the Bulls. And TG, who y'all was training with, and I know, he hit me one morning, like 6 in the morning. He's like, yo, MJ said you could meet him. I'm like, what? Man, I get down <laughs> downtown by 645. Man, man. I don't know. I get down there quick, right? So I get up there. I go to Hoops. It's myself, Tim, and MJ. It's just us three in the weight room. And I'll never forget it. MJ's doing like defensive slides. Why is he had them like the boot, uh, the footy arm? Oh, and he's the doing slide. defensive slides. Oh, on, the right. little, on the little slide the board. Slide, yeah, yeah. Slide board. Yeah. And I'm trying not to talk too much. I'm in awe. This is like my end all be all. Like, we'll <laughs> never see another Michael Jordan. We can get into that later. But so <laughs> this is like my, my everything. I'm looking at him. He looked like he got a glow around him, first off. So I'm like, man, this dude ain't even real. What you, you mean? Take glow. <laughs> man, this ain't even real. So I'm like, damn. So I'm just sitting there and I'm trying not to talk too much because he's working out. So I'm just following suit as he talks and I'll talk back. But you know, he's in his workout. <laughs> and so uh, and so he was like, Yeah, he said, you know, this is Jordan talking. He's like, Yeah, um, this summer, you know, I'm gonna be playing more. I, you know, I would like to, you know, have you come down and work out and stuff. I'm like, yeah. So boom, I'll leave there at like 7:45. We play that day, matter of fact. We had like a 10 a.m. shoot around. I call everybody back home on the way. But you remember in Seattle, it's only 545. So ain't nobody right. up. So I go back and tell AJ, God, I just met MJ. And they like, what? Boom. Fast forward to that summer. Now he's coming back. I'm at hoops every day. Very we good. hoop, we get it in. We playing. At first, we weren't playing on the same team. And when we started playing on the same, we never lost, bro. Ever. And I don't mean like. We won five one day and somebody else won four and somebody else won three. Like, we didn't lose a single game. Like, we did. And it just showed his greatness. I remember one time I had the ball and I threw a full court. And I was like, damn, I threw that too far. Man, this man jumped up. He's four years old. He jumped up and grabbed it like a baseball mitt. Never touched it with his left hand. Took one dribble and dunk. I said, what? Like, my man, I couldn't do that at 20. Like, what, what are you doing at 40? <laughs> you already know them hands was cheat code. It was cheat code. So, with that. He said, man, he, I started going to his house. You know what I mean? Like, we just became tight. Like, when I tore my ACL, he got me the doctor. Yeah. He told me about the doctor to go to in Alabama, yeah. and he knew that person from when he was down there playing baseball. So I remember calling him the night before my surgery. I was nervous, and he just took care of me and took a liking to me. And then yeah. when he did the, the, the Jordan commercial, 39 versus 23, 
he picked me to be play the younger him. Right. We had the same kind of body type, you know what I mean? Just I was like, man, this is a dream, bro. It's a dream. It still don't feel real to me, y'all, to be honest with you. Straight like up. that, like we was with Michael Jordan, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Bro, I tell Fe- people that February seventeenth, nineteen sixty. No, he's about my first name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, like I, with the goat. I tell people that all the time, bro. When they be asked, like, like that man hand picked me and my dog. Like we sitting there trying to figure out what shoe deal, what we about to get. Our agent trying to negotiate and do his thing. We for a minute, we for real thought we was gonna be in one, bro. Oh, that's what I came in with. with. I was in we one. Got there, first. MJ yeah, Camp. And, and one had and, us too. And we Mike told us, the, us. I told y'all we was the culture. We was the culture. Yeah, Mike hit everyone. us with the mic with us like, nah, man, you gonna come with like, us. I'm like, going. we don't even know what that mean. We ain't know it was a Jordan brand or Jumpman team coming into play or nothing. Like, we, man, bro, when we started getting all that stuff, like, you couldn't tell me nothing. Like, I, this I, is I, like I, you I, said, this is him, the dude we didn't looked up to. Now he coming and telling us, like, look, y'all gonna be here. And like we talked about this the other day, like, you know, the Jordan brand team. I think they're getting more back to it now than like it was. Cause you remember when we came out, bro, we was like the League of Assassins or something. We was like, yeah. the, we was like a, the, the 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 one of the most like lethal with tactical He's units the in the Navy Seals. Seals, or Seals bro. It, it was only yeah. like eight of us, and it was like yeah. every one of us, you knew they was one of them. They was with the witness, like period. Now they bring no it back to us. Yeah, they getting back down to more of a covert unit, but I understand as a brand grows, you do more like they more like just like a Nike now. Like it's like they like Adidas, not like, not just like a, a little small unit. We was like a little now they football, baseball, they all over the place. Like so it's obviously bigger, but like back then, it was just like the like this the league of extraordinary assassins or something. <laughs> let me let me ask y'all that. Like, how's it feel to see the growth? To see you know, where it's come from, to know that y'all, Derek Anderson, Bibby, like y'all mm. was on the, the beginning front line of that. Like, how's that feel to see the growth? And I'm sure you could have predicted it because it was Jordan, but how, how do you feel, you know, like like I, looking I at something that you kind of helped start? I couldn't have predicted it. I mean, I mean, obviously you know that this is MJ. He ain't going to lose, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't right. see that, you know what I'm saying, in sight, but it's like, man, just to see – how you how he's kept it going and it's gotten bigger and bigger and then you know to have guys like Russell Westbrook, uh, Blake, you know uh, CP, uh, Mello to, right. to to now when you got the Zion's and the Tatum's and, Lucas, and these boys yeah. and Luca like like man it's crazy it's, it's like yeah, it's, it's 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 big to to be a part of his journey like we're a part yeah. of the goat journey like yeah. People know us, but be like, man, I remember when y'all hoop, y'all used to wear the mics and, and so forth on. It's like just being a part of his story, that journey, that whole crew, and seeing these young guys now, you know, like yeah. Tatum, like, man, I used to see you, he called me Black D. I used to see Black D with the J's right. on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like, when he was a young boy, you know, coming right. up under yeah. us. So Louis, just to yeah. see these next generations, man, just seeing it and, and still be affiliated with it. Like yeah. they affiliated us with Mike and it's, it's come on, man. You that, affiliated that's, that's with the GOAT. Link. That's like with me and the S. Dot Carter, like I'll be forever linked with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. no matter what. I remember when we was with the Knicks, I used to mess with this man all the time. This man had literally any and every S-dots. type of color you could think when of. When I went to Reebok, I had them S dots. The S dots and them G units, I used to rock them. <laughs> hey, D Miles, D Miles, if you came to my apartment in New York, I promise you, when you walked in, it looked like a footlocker. I had every, I had hundreds no of pair of dots that were never coming out. I like still they got had, S dots. I, I still got S dots. Yeah, and it was like never coming out. That, that like just looked like a Foot Locker. May wear it once, may not wear it all. Like you know what I mean? That just nah, was there. I remember when we was in New York, bro. Like that was that was. I tell people all the time, bro. Like. Man, if you got us together and got us to talking about them New York days, boy, y'all get so much just ridiculous, this classicness. Like, hey, man, you know what, bro. Q? That may, that might have to be a show down the line. We might have to get everybody on a on a, yeah, on a we, Zoom call for that one. Hey, still got my S dots, man. Hey, I got those. Still got the S man. Yeah. And them okay, size twenties. And them yeah, size twenties. Yeah, Shout out Jay Z. Still got these S dots, man. Them size thirties. I, I had a I had a fatigue uh, button up with the one on the left. You had that. Yeah. <laughs> Still got my S dots, man. That was comfortable in the mud. I love them shoes. 
Hey, tell me this though, bro. Tell me this. How was it when you got when you when you when you got to the Clippers and you out there with that group of dudes and like not only that, like you in LA, LA a beautiful, great city to be in, but then you got the experience of LA that we didn't never really get to experience. Yeah. Because at this point, this was one of the rare times in the history of basketball that even though you know, it's no competition when it comes to the championships and yada yada yada. At that point, popularity wise, it could be we argued that y'all were y'all were more popular we than the it. Lakers. Y'all were winning more because the Lakers yep. were down. And so, how was that to be yeah. a part of that Clipper Nation and a part of that team and that impactful? Bro, it was it was unbelievable because, like you said at the time, the Lakers are who they are, and ain't no change in history. Ain't change in as long be. as Kobe exactly. was putting on a uniform, the Lakers was going to be the Lakers, right? Yep. But at a time, we had a, we carved out a space where it wasn't just all Lakers. It was like, no, nah, I'm rocking with the Clippers now. You yeah. know what I mean? And we were good. And we was beating them a lot. Like, for real, for real. Like, we was beating mm -hmm. them a lot. And I'm sure they beat us. But if we played 15, 16 times in that four-year span, I bet you we won 95% of the game. It may be us once or twice. But it like we was winning. It, it gave our fans something to kind of stick their chest out and be proud about. I was I a fan, think, even yeah, though I was still in the league. I was proud as a Definitely former Clipper fan. to see the yeah. shit. And y'all laid the blueprint. But I honestly think that, to be honest, I think that Lob City team should have made it to at least two finals. Definitely, it takes a little luck Agreed. to win. It, so I don't know if we'd have won it, but we should have at least made it to two of them finals. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And so I think that's one of the most talented teams that's never won, never won, and never won and been to the finals because we had everything. We was loaded. Yeah. Like loaded. Agree, agree. Yeah, y'all had squad. People, man. people, people forget that before Golden State went on a run to win them championships, we was, was the last team. team to put them out the playoffs. Yeah, y'all was the team. Y'all was the team. Yeah, and then we put we put the defending champion Spurs out the playoffs the, the next year. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about uh, Duncan Jamal Crawford. Like, is it high school and then college? You used to be dunking this yeah. shit out that motherfucker off the backboard yeah. to yourself yeah. and all that stuff. Tell us one of your memories about one of them fly dunks. He was catching body he still did. when he first got in the league. Yeah, league. what he get? Hey, hey, I was playing last night and did whoop by somebody and threw a two hand flush down. Nah, okay. but uh, <laughs> I think the, one of my favorite ones, there was two of them that, I, that stand out to me. It, one was I was with the Bulls and we came back and played uh, the Sonics. And so, you know, you know how it is. You get into town, you drop your bags, do whatever you do. I drop my bags. Day before, I go play on the playground for three hours. Me and my man, we go play. I play the Sonics the next night. We got out here like three, four in the afternoon. I go play three hours. The next day, I had, I'm had. i in a contract here, by the way. It's my fourth year in Chicago. Mm. I get 31, and I throw off the backboard and get an one. So that was dope, coming home, throw off the backboard, put on a show. And then my first time in the garden doing it against the Wizards. Because you all know ain't nothing like the garden. That's the most famous yeah, arena. Right. It's like you're walking on. You say if you're on stage performing there. So when I did it in the garden, those are my two favorite ones off the backboard. Let me let me ask you this. You uh you play 20 years in the league, and I know people ask me this all the time, and I tell them, they say, So what do you miss from the game since you played? And I tell them the adrenaline. It's it's yeah. like a, oh. it's like when you walk in the arena and you see them fans and they're around you, it's like a drug that you can't buy out of the store. You can't go nowhere and get that. A drilling you get from the crowd, I can't replace it with nothing else in life that I do. What is some, one of the things that you, since you've been retired, that you- I don't I don't know that we could say that because he's not retired. He's still I'm not ready retired, to right but, now. No, I'm not retired, but to the end, to be keep it real, I got two, actually I got two phone calls in the last couple of weeks or somebody was trying to bring me on a 10 day, but I just kind of passed up on it. it, it but you feel I ain't told nobody that. So this knuckleheads, I got to keep real with my folks. But, <laughs> um, but uh, like you said, I love being around my teammates and just the trips and stuff you remember, but the, the adrenaline, like I really felt like when that popcorn was going, bro, I honestly felt like I could do anything. Mm -hmm. I literally felt like this may be a night you score 50, you may score 55, you can't make somebody fall. Yeah, that's real. You can't get the, it, don't worry. The dopest part was, I didn't know what it was going to be that mm -hmm. night. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what it was going to be that night. But that is just like a performance, bro. Like, I always felt like an artist. Like, he was on stage performing. And just that part of it. Like, you're you're you're, you're performing and you're giving your talents to the world. Like, the world's going to see it on social media or ESPN, whatever it is. 
right? Like giving, sharing your talents to the world is like was the dopest thing. That adrenaline, you just can't, you can't duplicate it. You can't where, duplicate it. Where do you think you got your, because I don't need to ask, I know you superstitious. Where do you think yeah. that came <laughs> from with everything? Like, like, how did you get to that point? Because I can, do you remember the time with the Knicks? Let me tell you how superstitious this man is, y'all. Like I told you the story about the rubber bands and all that. He do everything. And if one thing don't be right, he be like, like this, man. I, you know me, bro. I see everything with everybody. I'm, I got peripherals now. But like this man was this superstitious. I was just sitting there like, so one time, I don't remember exactly what he did. He hurt his shoulder somehow, right? So yep. Ant, the I great Ant Gornaga, he made like a little... Pad, he made yep. some type of little pad with like a circle in the middle. It was like the most obnoxious, craziest look, but it was keeping him like when he was hurt, it kept it protected so he wouldn't get hit and it wouldn't hurt again. Malden lost his mind in one of them games while he had this thing on. Never took it, it off. Now, now the injury long gone. The injury long gone, D-Man. He, he still got it. <laughs> he's still getting taped. And the pad put on. I'm talking about a cool month later. I'm like, man, ain't nothing wrong with this man. No more. Hey. Hey, Where got did that type point. of superstitions come from, bro? Yeah. He got to the point, Mr. Dolan, I heard he got back to you, Mr. Dolan, like, he has to take it off. Like, he's, <laughs> he has to take it off now. He, It's making me think something's wrong. Tell him to take it off. So I had to, <laughs> wow. to get rid of it. Yeah, I had to get rid of it. But when I was a kid, bro, like I talked about, I was in the backyard a lot. Like, my imagination just run wild. So I would be in the backyard. I was a kid. I would count down three, two, one. Oh, make this shot. You're going to Michigan. Oh, make this right. shot. You're going to NBA. I'm a I'm fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, just dreaming. So this ain't really supposed to happen, right? Make this shot, you're going to Michigan. Make this shot, you're going to NBA. I'm in eighth grade, bro. You know what I mean? There's millions upon millions of kids doing that same thing. Yeah. And so when it worked out for me, I'm like, damn, I really went to Michigan. Man, I made it to the NBA. <laughs> oh, man, I'm, when, when something tells me to do something, and it's that's it. They ain't, hey, it's a non-negotiable cue. <laughs> so if it's the shoulder pad and I get hot, that shoulder pad ain't going nowhere. It's supposed to, it's my lucky shoulder pad. Let me ask you this. So, so what did you eat before the games? Same shit. <laughs> what I, I eat, Q? That man had steak and potatoes. <laughs> well, <laughs> Every game. Hey, I, I read a long time ago that Michael Jordan did that. He ate steak and potatoes before the game. steak and potatoes, bro. I see him. I'm like. <laughs> hey, to the, point, to the point, if we was on the road, I would order it. If the bus was at 430, I would order to get delivered to the front desk and to go container at four fifteen. He come walking so on the bus with his little bag. <laughs> My little bag. Yep. All right, so we we are part of the hip hop culture. So uh, yeah. what this was the music uh, man? Nah, this is the music man. When you talk about music, but, this his life is about like as much as it is about basketball. You could draw yep. a parallel line, and music goes right there. He's we the part music of hip hop culture. So what what was that CD or or that song? that you had to listen to damn near before every game that to, that gets you in the mode of- Jay-Z what? Going out there to yeah. do your thing. Yeah, you know. So Jay -Z for me, what? I always, this is how I looked at it, right? I always looked at it like this. The most fun you have is when you're in high school playing. You dominant, it's still pure. You can put on a show and go play with, you hang out with your friends or do whatever you do, right? And so I always try to put myself in that mindset before the game. So I would play songs I would play in high school before games. So whether it be old Jay-Z, Tupac, Biggie, Nas, whatever it be, it would be something I listened to him before the high school game. Because I wanted to get in that mindset where I was free, where I was not thinking, where it wasn't like a coach could take me out of my zone or a teammate, none of that. Like, I just wanted to be in that zone. And so I put myself in that zone before every single game I ever played. It was a high school song. That I listened to then that was playing in my headphones. Mm. But it was mainly Jay-Z, Outkast, Tupac, Biggie, Nas. Yeah, this the music, man. You can't catch yeah. it without headphones. I took it, I took it, I always took it back to that 96, 97, 98. The 90s, time. you gotta have the 90s. Hey, but look, look, yeah. look, Ma, not everybody, this is how far we go back though. Like I could like me and Ma was teammates when we was when you was still walking on the plane with your with your CD disc man, with your walk. Yeah, we go all the way back. And we transitioned it to the iPods. That's when I started loading up his iPods with the fly music and all the teammates. Yep. Yep. Like we came from that era where we still was doing CDs and LimeWire and all that stuff. LimeWire, Napster, you bro. feel me, bro? We yeah. dated, but it was that's how we was moving. 
That's how we was moving. We, hey, us three come from the Escalade era. We yeah. all had Escalades. Yeah, you had, you know what I mean? yeah. I remember that. Like, wow. That was, that was the rookie know. startup kid. Now these boys get in the league and getting whatever. Maybach, oh, yeah, they, W's, Ben. Oh, no, no, they, they get come to with, Maybach. They come with Rose Truck. Maybach. Yeah. Rapes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me this. This is the question I like to ask. I mean, I know, I, I kind of know part of this, but I want to hear a different story because we was there for when you got, like, I always like to ask when you got that bag. You know, we come from humble. Beginners, we feel yeah. good. We ain't never had no. You got the. I, I know the story from the draft, so I'm gonna go past that. I know when we was at the draft, you splurged with Ice Man. You got all yeah. the ice, yeah. but <laughs> I want to know. I, I was. We kind of know that. We we was already envious. Like, damn, you seen Ma? What he got? We was like, we want. So I know that story. I want to hear a different the story. Shining, looking like yeah. Baby. He I want to hear. Like I want to hear another story. Not like oh, I got Mom Deuce. We all took care of family. You know that. I want to hear somewhere Ma took care of Ma. Where it was like, yeah, you look back yeah. and it was like, that was kind of crazy. But you know, right, we, so we, jury, we enjoy. If we ain't talking about the jury, because we already know that, right? Because that was crazy. my splurge, right? And that one hurt me. I, ooh, I, that was before <laughs> we even had money. So I know, yeah. like, now that we yeah. older, but like, we can talk about it because, you know, somebody young can learn from this. Like, this was Damn. something before we even made a dollar hey. in the NBA. That before I made a dollar in the NBA, I was already in the hole on the credit line with that jury. Like, <laughs> and this yeah. before we even don't knew. Do this, no credit this, lines, this, kids. this right when you was finding out, like, wait, oh, so I don't make money until, like, November? Like, when November? the game started oh, happening? This, like, what's that credit June. line? What's the credit line? <laughs> yeah, it's it's June. June. <laughs> yeah, so, um, that one, obviously, you want to talk about. I would say the first thing I spurred on me was Escalade. It was burgundy with the white interior, and it had the JC and burgundy on it. It was the same color of Fabs in the one in the I Can't Deny it video. Same, yeah. which is identical did, did you, Escalade. Now, did, you go, did you go to the infamous 310 Motory? Oh, that was y'all. See, that was y'all's place. I Everybody think time, that. Everybody think that we work. No, remember Gilbert said the same thing. He said we did not do. Listen, Ran okay. do three one zero. First of all, this is a, this is oh, a breaking news. Them? Like, listen, this is breaking he, news he right here on new, breaking news right here on Knuckleheads because Gilbert just said it. Somebody else said it. like we saw your spot. Like, look, we I weren't falling like that, bro. Bro, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Now, LA people gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. Right. We got our rims. We had matching rims. First of all, we had the same matching twin S I had a white one. With chrome detail, he had a gold one with I mean a black one with gold detail. Now we got our we got our um we got some we got some honey spokes. And then we throw some D's on that hoe. Yeah, we got we got some eight honey spokes. Now those was from a hood hookup. Shout out Marv. You remember Marv, Mark Ray. Yeah, those D's on them honey spokes. He got us a hookup on the honey spokes. Like, look, now everybody thought we got our TVs and our system from 310, right? No. We went to Al and Ed's Auto, bro. The regular little Al and Ed's Auto, like over there in the marina by the, by, by the, by the. Yeah. <laughs> bro, bro, that's the most shocking news I heard today. I yeah. just knew y'all was 310 King. We had wow. to flip out. We I had, had the flip out. In that he bitch, had six twelves. I only had two tens. He had six twelves, but like. Hold on, so let me ask y'all this though. When y'all had the beats, did y'all have a screen that popped up with the remote control? Yes, too? it come out like yeah. this. Yeah, 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 like this. Right. Yeah. Not go to I always lost that goddamn paid, remote. <laughs> yeah, I did too. A, we paid a quarter of what people that went to 310 pay because we was like, we wasn't look, bro. We from the Midwest. We hey, I ain't gonna <laughs> lie, bro. Until right now, I knew GP and Twan because they was OGs and they was 310 yep. Kings. But I thought y'all was a young 310 Kings until right now, Gil literally. Gilbert, everybody, like, you not like, you like the fourth or fifth person that said that like, yeah, man, I know what I seen when y'all was getting- It had no 310 plates on it, nothing. No. I could have swore y'all was through it. Oh man, I ain't never knew that. Wow. And after we started that. really feeling like we was getting money, we used to mess with our man Sheezy out at Pacific Coast Highway Motorsports or whatever. That was kind of out in the valley a little bit. Yeah, he was taking okay. care of us for real though. He was really hooking up. L.O. who had put us okay. on us, yeah, on him. put us up on him. L.O., shout out L.O. too, bro. That's one of my great teammates I played with. Good dude. The best. Yeah. yeah. Like the other thing I wanted to ask you, man, it was, which is something that I thought that was dope. I, and I can remember sitting at home watching when it happened. Like, how did it feel for you? Like somebody who's, a, like you say, you a basketball purist, you a historian, you all of that with the game. When you do things like pass Reggie Miller, you know what I'm saying, for the most four point plays yeah. in the history of the game, like how how does that resonate with you? You you know what I'm saying, doing all these different things and then you look up and like you said, this is something that you were ridiculed about, like creating off the dribble, shooting threes yeah. and doing those things. But like that's also a testament to your, 
you know, your will to stick with it and continue to do your thing. Like, how did that feel to to get to that point where it's like, dog, this like you 98, you the same, we the same age. So I know you being an MJ fan, y'all know what Reggie meant to you and how he meant yeah. to all of us looking up. And for you to think like never in a million years, like, yeah, one day, you know, we all dream to make the league, make this. You didn't dream I'm gonna pass Reggie Miller record one day. No, nah, no, nah, like that's it's to be honest with you, when I could really sit back and really sit back and, and detach myself and separate from it, it's going to hit me. Like, man, like, even hearing y'all say, man, we was at Alonzo Morning's house. Like, damn, y'all was at his house? Like, I remember watching his own inside stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, jams of the week and, and jam session and all that. Like, just all that, and him, and, him, him hitting the game with a shot at the top of the key when he took that pause in the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. With the double armbands. Mm -hmm. Like, so for me, it's like Reggie Miller, like seeing him score eight points in eight seconds in, right. in New York and one of the greatest shooters ever. Like that stuff, man, I'm not jaded. Like I'm not jaded, bro. I'm not one of these dudes who like, yeah, it's all about me. We made it. Look what I'm doing. Like, ah, like, bro, that's Reggie Miller. Right. So anytime you can, like, we're already in the 1% by playing in the NBA, right? To yes. circumstances, to being, there's only been 5,000 players in history. Yeah. So we already in the 1%. And when you doing something positive with, the one percent of the one percent, and you leave your mark on this game, man. It's like a, it's a blessing. It's a dream. Something like that, I didn't even dream about, to be honest with you. Like, oh, who would have yeah. guessed I would have broke some of Reggie Miller's records, or you know, That's like, come crazy. on, man, Reggie Miller. Reggie you know what I mean? So I'm just thankful and blessed and humbled by it, for real, for real. Like on some real, real, real talk. Straight up. Man, I just want to salute you, my boy. Like, you know how yeah. we go back like four flats, man. I done watched everything, man. I feel like you for real one of them ones that, you know, when things get said and done, you're going to go down as somebody who 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 made it cool to be a six man, who made it acceptable. You know, obviously you weren't the first, you won't be the last and you didn't start it. But I mean, it's a real benchmark for me to watch, watch what you did and to know the game you possess and to know that you was able to humble yourself and say, I'm going to do this for the team and I'm going to do this for this and that. But at the same time, still be able to find yourself and be a champion in that role and do all that you was able to do, man. You show, like I say, a lot of people that, you, that you, no matter what, whether it was the, you know, being ridiculed or told, don't go to camp, like you give people hope. If anybody look at what you did and really look at it and say, man, I can go to Chicago camp and kill and make it. Right. And they can. So, I mean, you give the underdogs and all these other different people, dog, you, you're a representation of like, we could do that. We could do that no matter what, what 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 curveballs you thrown or what happened. Like you still be you, and you can still be one of them people because you one of them ones. No matter what, nobody say they can't talk about the game of basketball. Period. Without talking about Maul Crawford somewhere up in there, you yeah. just solidified, stamped, and approved that. That's good. And I feel I feel like you uh you you just like us. Like we we was never no all star. We're not gonna get selected to no Hall of Fame, but. We helped push the coach. Ho, 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 ho. That, that, that speak for us. He I'm might saying got us. I'm saying me and you, bro. Right. I ain't talking about Jamal Crawford. He got a shot at the hog, baby. Yeah, but, but, but you, you know what I'm saying. But, like, you know, no, we no, made the all-star no. game, but we pushed the culture. Like, they, these folks are looking for you just as much as they looking for the, the top player on any team. You know what I'm saying? You, you aspire just as much as the Kobe's and everybody else aspire. So, like, man, just to be a part of the story of this game and, and j just to do it the way you did it, it's, it's never be done like that again. And, and I man, definitely I respect that, bro. Like, and I, I promise to God, I hope, like, y'all see, when y'all see me, y'all see y'all. Like, y'all yeah, push yeah. me, y'all feel me, y'all feel the whole class. Like, y'all, I'm telling y'all. If I wasn't even on the show, and they was like, hey, who was the top dog? I'm like, oh, the knuckleheads. Q and Q and Q and Q and Q and Q. You serious? Like, they, y'all inspired us, bro, to like, man, they getting it. Like, y'all was some of the first ones where, I was hearing people was giving y'all stuff to wear this or do that or whatever it might be. I'm like, damn, people are doing that. Like they y'all, you made me wide eyed, man. I I, I really appreciate y'all. And like, like I said, hopefully when y'all see me, you see y'all because we all are tied together. And I right appreciate y'all. And I couldn't wait to come on the show. I gotta shout out Rob Harris and Dave Hudson. They was like, man, when are you going on the knuckleheads? I'm like, man, I don't, whenever they want me, I'm here. So <laughs> I, I, I've been wanting to come on the show for, for the whole time. So y'all back and I appreciate it. Thank oh, man, you guys. We so, definitely so, so got much. you, bro. <laughs> yes, for real, so, for real. Man.